My problem with that is that I, th I think it's unethical. Really? If then I were to ask you, do you think you're... turn your webcam on and start talking to me. I had a real life friend named Byron. He had absolutely nothing to gain by associating with me ever, but he really appreciated it. He liked it a lot because we could have conversations that he couldn't have with other people oftentimes. So I would assume you're kind of similar. I mean, maybe not, but it seems like it. Yeah, I've heard uh, people have told, multiple people, including Melina, have told me that I remind you of him. I think I'm going to attack Dr. K. No. Okay, I think that it might be that the conversation is going to break here, or because you're convinced of something that is not true, but I don't know if okay. I can move you off of it, and I understand why. So, hold on, wait, wait. I engage... Are you waiting for me to say something, or am I waiting for you to say something? Like I'm okay. waiting. Wait. Like I'm waiting, you're waiting for, for me. I think so. Oh, what do you? What am I? Wait. What am I supposed to say? I don't know. Oh. I'm waiting till I have the, whatever percentage your, of your attention I'm going to get. I'm waiting for that to, to have that. Well, I'm I'm here. You have you have me. I can't play games because I'm on my laptop. <clears throat> I can't watch anything else because I only have one monitor. So you have me fully, one hundred percent plugged in. Okay, it's I know that's, that's kind of. Right. I know that's kind of what I was hoping for. Okay, well, I'm here. Uh, okay, I just watched your interview with um, Dr. K. Oh, jeez. I'm gonna catch myself up to speed. Okay, uh, we. I feel like we have a lot to talk about. I would hope so. I mean, you wanted to interview me, so if we had nothing to talk about, that'd be pretty fucking awkward, huh? Yes. Uh -huh. Um. Okay. First, I want to talk. Well, first, I want to talk about our relationship, as usual. Oh boy. Oh. Um, let's start off with some advice, okay? Okay. Stop having so many goddamn meta conversations. All right. Have a conversation. Stop talking. Stop having so many conversations about conversations. I noticed okay, sometimes you get really bogged down in the meta conversation. Of kind of ironic that you're saying that but okay well because it's a meta conversation about meta conversations about conversations it is it is, it is. but you know um, what's your problem with that I think that you start off assuming people are being dishonest and then it kind of just derails them for the rest of the conversation because people are really off put when you tell somebody hey I think you're lying or something yeah, do you think do you think I'm wrong? It doesn't matter if you're right or wrong. It just it destroys the rest of the conversation because you've already put the person on the defensive or whatever. I think it's what I think that if you have the impression that somebody is lying, I think it's good to work your way around through to that so that you kind of both can arrive at that together and then give them an opportunity to be more forthcoming rather than accusing them of lying. Do you see why I think that's a bit manipulative? Yeah, but conversation is all about Manipulation. All, uh, to some yeah, extent. I know. I know. I, I know you think that, but I don't like to do it that way. Okay, that's fine. Although I but just I, understand I, that you're going to make people very defensive, right? Yes, I, I know. Well, I that's very clear. But I think, I, ironically, I'm getting a reputation for being very manipulative. Yeah. And and you have a reputation for being very not manipulative, and yet you're yeah. telling me you're telling me to be more manipulative. Yeah. So what do you think about that? <clears throat> So let's say I'm having a conversation with somebody and they say, um, I really fucking hate X, okay? Yeah. And I know they don't hate X. They're either saying right. it because they feel like they have to or because they feel like, right? So yeah. there's two approaches I can take. Instantly I can go, I know that you're lying about hating X. You actually love X. This is going to, we, we, now we've established a conflict where I'm telling yeah. them they're lying about something and we're gonna fight about that. Now yeah. people intrinsically don't view themselves as liars so they're never going to believe you, right? But let's say instead they say, I hate X. I might say something like, okay, that's fair. Um, I really enjoy uh, doing Y in my life. I think I've had a lot of fun with it. Do you know anybody that does it? Okay, yeah, cool. It's kind of like yeah. X, it reminds you of that, you know. I think it's like kind of cool. I think it's pretty chill. And they're like, yeah, you know, I can kind of see that, sure. Yeah, actually, you know, it's okay. And now we've kind of, we've gotten to the place that I wanted to be by being less direct 
because when I'm more direct, it puts them on a, we're gonna fight over our character. But when I'm less direct, we've externalized it to like an idea that now we're kind of arriving at together. And it feels like we've kind of walked together through a garden and we've gotten to the end of the path rather than I showed up with my sword and shield ready to fight them over their assessment of themselves. <laughs> that makes but sense. But you, you've created the path. We agree on that. That's what makes it more manipulative, is that you- Sure, it might be manipulative if you want to call it that, but it's- but I I'm do. just saying that- Well, I want to call okay, it that you... to explain why I don't want to do it. Okay. It all depends at the end of the day what your goal is, but all I'm saying is that all you're going to do is you're going to run into... I think you're getting... I think sometimes you can get bogged down in fights that you don't want to have because they're not very productive and they don't accomplish well, anything. Well, I don't... Just cause I don't want to have them, but to, mm -hmm. uh, the I don't think the ends justify the means. Okay. Well, I mean, you can... And, and you think they people. do. <laughs> yeah, I I'm do. Fighting, I'm fighting with you right now. True. And ironically... You are not doing what you're suggesting that I do in this conversation. You're coming out with your sword and shield head on. Because I think that I think that we think a little bit more similarly. So okay. I think if we have an issue with each other, I we would just tell you, stop doing this dumb shit, right? Now, if right. you were somebody different, I would approach the conversation in a much different way. Right. Mm -hmm. I think I want to... Um, I don't want to change how I, I'll, I, I definitely really change how I communicate depending on who I'm talking to, but I, I think I don't want to change this. I would rather mm -hmm. just crash. Sure. I mean, it just depends on where you want the fighting to be. I don't want to try to control where it is. I think that's what I'm saying is I want to just say what I think is happening. Here's the, here's my problem. Mm -hmm. uh, if I don't talk about what's happening, in a conversation with you or uh, in our relationship or in a conversation with whoever with book smarts uh, like the, the prime example then then it becomes because there is always some meta uh interaction happening whether mm -hmm. you talk about it or not and what you're saying is i should only acknowledge the topical surface part and then also just win the meta conversation like when the meta are, if, if they start trying to push me around in subtle ways, don't talk about it. Just win that fight that's unspoken and then also participate in the main, the main topic. And yeah, I, as soon as, as soon as I sense mm -hmm. that happening, I just want to call it out. Yeah, I understand, but there's just, there are ways that it's just like, it's like a psychology thing. Like there are ways that we can talk to people so that they feel like they have more agency over the conversation, even if they don't. They, I don't know yeah, they feel like it. they have more, but they actually have mm -hmm. less. True. But that's good. You want them to have that feeling because then it makes them feel more involved in the conversation and less attacked, right? <clears throat> I know you gave, you gave, you told me to treat Lauren Southern like a cat. The way that I would say it is, and this sounds even more condescending than how you were acting, but I would say sometimes you need to treat- I, I meant the first time we talked. Yeah, uh, sure. A... You need to treat people like cats a little bit. What you're trying to do is, if I have a cat that I know and I love and I trust, I can run right up to that cat, I can give it a big right. hug, and I can play like yeah. really crazy games with it, and the cat will be excited to play along. But if I see a cat right. on the street, I have to do a lot to earn that cat's trust before it's gonna play with me and not feel like I'm gonna try to kill it. And I think, I think what yeah. you're doing when you approach some people in conversations, especially people like Lauren, who have been attacked a lot of the network people, too much. Yeah, you're asking for, you want, to, you want to rub her belly right off the bat. You want her to roll over and rub her belly, yeah. a stray cat, yeah. with just immediately. And that is totally right. impossible for 99% of people to do. It's, it's just not going to happen, right? Yeah. You said, don't just run up and start rubbing her belly, which is what I did. Mm -hmm. But my problem with that is that I, th I think it's unethical. Really? Yeah, especially if I'm talking to somebody who may um, like end up saying something about themselves possibly being like being radicalized and killing people or trying to kill migrants like anything where they might because like I, like she because she's not a cat like if the the shit I talk about with people can be very heavy and dark and i think that i need to be as transparent as humanly possible in those conversations to be to do it ethically 
I think it would be wrong to give Lauren Southern a false sense of security that I'm not going to judge you. You know, we're just talking and can you just kind of see how we get here? And then when she looks back at the path and she realizes, oh, you've led me down this. P I mean, that's basically what Booksmarts did to me. He, he got me to show him my belly, but I, I was wrong to do so. He, he tricked me. That's why I got so mad at him. Because then, and then afterward, he stuck a knife in it. And if he had come okay. at me with the sword and shield, then I would have been like, okay, great. He's going to come with the sword and shield. I, I know that he's going to attack me after this conversation, blah, sure. blah. But he came at me with the trying to get me to roll over, and then he knifed me. Okay. And I so, don't want to do that. Sometimes uh, Nathan would engage in behavior that I think is bad. So let's say that Nathan takes something from somebody. He's not sharing a toy or he's not sharing a game well. Okay. I might, with Is Nathan, Nathan your son? Yes, sorry. Okay. My son. Um, okay. So I might, with Nathan, kind of talk him through, like, hey, um, if I were to come in every time you were playing with a game and I were to take it from you, you probably wouldn't enjoy that very much, right? And I might try mm -hmm. to have an, a conversation with him where I'm trying to get him to live the experience of, like, well, if somebody took all of my stuff, it wouldn't be very fun. And nobody would want to play with you. Nobody would want to play with me. If I'm constantly taking your stuff and people would have a good time, then you wouldn't have a good time. And I might try yeah. to get him to experience through that. Like, okay, so maybe it's better to share and not be taking things from people because it'll make sure everybody has a better experience. Or I could just say, Nathan, you need to share. Stop being an idiot. I could be more direct. Now, I don't think it's yeah. unethical to go through the experiential route where I'm kind of like demonstrating, you know, hey, like, let's think about these experiences so that we can evoke something in the mind that gets us closer to what I want to achieve, which is to get you to share your toys more. I don't think that's an yeah. unethical thing, right? Well, it, no, but you're his father. I mean, the relationship is, he knows that you're his father. He knows that you, first of all, you but are. It's not, about me. it's not about me being his father. That doesn't make the well, advice I, right. I, I, I could I, be a teacher. I, think, I, think, I could be a caretaker. I could okay, be whatever, I right? I'm not, but okay. I'm, that's what I'm saying is I don't want to tell Lauren Southern that I am her caretaker or her teacher because I'm not. But I'm I'm engaging in, in, a, in, a, in a intimate it's an intimate interview, but it's also exploitative and dangerous. It's not an yeah. So we got to be clear about the goal. It wasn't an interview. It was a confrontation. We were trying to get a concession. So that gives you the power in that conversation. I don't think I don't you're, agree. I don't agree. Okay, um, you're absolutely wrong. <laughs> you disagree okay. with me because you have nothing to lose in that conversation. There, you have nothing at stake. You're, in that part of like the conversation, in that part of the conversation, yeah. we were talking about cuties too you but you've completely owned up to that you're fine this is another thing i think i told you that you you feel like you're doing one thing but you're not you're saying like oh well we're both like you know pedophiles and nazis lol you're totally scored away with that you're good with that you've processed that you're open about it and you've moved on from it and you're you've integrated that experience fully right in, into your existence lauren right. southern clearly has not so no. you don't have anything to lose there it would be like imagine if i were talking about like an incredibly sexually um uh, closed off like woman who's in her 30s and she's like a virgin right and I start saying like oh okay like I really like jerking off to my little pony right now I'm really open with my sexual experience now you can be open right it's not going to be the same for you like wait hold okay, on that, I'm like, we, this we, is not... we, okay mm -hmm. I'm, I may be in a better place to have a conversation about my controversies than she is mm -hmm. but that yeah. does not change the fact that the conversation was not set up as an interview or and it was not set up as a confrontation Sure, it might not that, be. It, it became I, a confrontation. I, but yeah, I, but I don't really I, care what it was set up as, but what it became was Lauren Southern was essentially on trial for something that she's done historically, and you were kind of like judge, jury, and executioner running that trial, where you were trying to get a concession from her, like, hey, I need you to admit that in a part of your life you were a fucking atrocious human being. So let's, I don't think let's that, go I ahead and get you to I, I don't think that's, that's what I said. I think I said I want you to rec I want you to answer these questions. And if the answer is you don't think you were an atrocious human being, that's fine. I just want you to have an answer or say that you don't want to talk about it. Yeah, but nobody's going to say they don't want to talk about it because then it sounds like they're making the concession all the same. If then I were to ask you, do you think don't fucking turn your webcam on and start talking to me. Sure, but I'm just saying what like is this, your this is what this is what I'm talking about. I don't want to be pushed around. I don't want to be pushed around. It is. You're, it's if, not, so, no. Because, because if, okay, if I, ask, so if I say, if I, uh -huh. in, in DMs, if I say, can we talk about our past controversies, including uh -huh. the migrant stuff? She says, yes. So then we turn our cameras on and now we're talking. And then I say, uh -huh. okay, here are my questions about it. And she answers. And I say, well, I feel like you're being evasive. I don't think you're really answering. Um, if she keeps if she... evading, at, at uh -huh. that point, unless I'm going to just, 
be like let her off the hook and pretend mm-hmm. that she has answered when she has not which i don't want mm-hmm. to do she's pushing she's trying to push me around she's trying she's, tr- well, she's not trying to push you around she's trying to dodge your aggression is what it's perceived from her point of view no no, because- no but the aggression is only in response to her pushing me around yeah but it's only in response that's it's only that response is... because there's something she doesn't want to, because you have the power in that situation you're trying to get a concession from her that she was a horrible person at one point in time she's never made no that i'm not i'm not I, I'm, I'm not trying to get that you, concession okay. from her i'm when trying to get her to answer when, no, no, the i need question. you to understand how, okay hold on i need you to understand how other people's minds work okay when i you know how say, their minds work but they're wrong okay <laughs> but it doesn't it doesn't do anything to say that when you're saying verbatim true. right if okay. i would have done anything like that i would have thought i was a horrible person when you yes. say that you're, I don't know if you realize it, but you're by proxy making the accusation you were a horrible person, and I need uh, you I'm, to no, say that. I need you to say that to me that you were. No, a horrible no, no, person. no, no, no. You are adding. I need you to say that to me on there. That's I'm, not true. I'm adding it because that's the that's the. I subtext. have this conversation with people all the time. People constantly are like, I think it, your review was immoral, and the things you say about cuties is horrible, and it's a horrible thing to say. She said mm-hmm. she she literally told me that my review yeah, was immoral. But when she but, said but that, she was not she was not telling. I don't take that to mean that I have to also think that. I you you just I I don't think you're understanding the um I think that when I understand perfect. No, no, no. You you don't. You think way too highly of people. I think that if I were to ask you questions <laughs> no, I under- about No, no. If I were to ask you questions about things you believe or things you've done, I think yeah. that I could ask you something about your cuties review and I could walk that thought back all the way to this is like the fundamental point of how I gather truth or happiness. I think I could I could follow all that back to, to that root cause. Do you agree with that? That any 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 like abstract thought you have can probably be traced back to some more fundamental thought, right? Sure. That's very inhuman. Very 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 few people can do that. So when you're approaching, you mean you somebody, mean you mean very few people would be able to have that conversation and tie those things together to eventually very few less than one percent of people could do that okay so when you're having a conversation with somebody and you're offering what looks like a weakness to somebody it's not you're 100 percent put together and ready to explore that so when lauren was lashing out at you and she was like okay well why did you cover the cuties review you're sitting there like and i've been in your position so i'm empathizing okay but when she says that that's almost like a yeah, let's go there because I've already explored that fully. Right. I can own every single part of that conversation. I've had them all before and I can be fully confident every step of the way when we're talking about that. So her attacking yeah. you with that is not the same as you attacking her with the let's talk about the migrant thing because clearly there's a lot of she, unresolved she has stuff not there. thought it th- she has not thought exactly, it through. Exactly. Yeah. So there's a huge even though this is what I was saying back at the original, even though it looked like you were offering her like a lifeline like oh look, we're like the same, you're not You've processed and integrated that so much more than she has with her experience. These are not the same things. And if anything, it almost looks like she's being baited or lured into uh, getting dragged down with you. And she's not even hasn't even gotten to that point of processing. That but I didn't yet. I didn't know that. Sure. Well, that's why I'm telling you, you need to make these assumptions with people, right? Most people are going to be able to. That, I need to assume that people have not processed anything that they've said or done even five years later. At least if you're if you're approaching something because you were trying to get a novel admission from her, she's never publicly said any of that was bad. I don't so, I don't think I that's not what I was trying to do. You keep saying that's what I was trying to do, but that's not true. A lot I of the wanted, conversation seemed to be revolving around getting her to say like, well, no, you know, reflecting no. on it and say, well, isn't this kind of bad? No, no, no. Okay, it felt like what that. I, I think she what, felt like that. Mm-hmm. I'm sure she did, but here's what I well, she felt like that because uh, she. Because just because I think something's bad doesn't mean I want you to think it's bad. What I wanted. But most people, just what you just said right there was very inhuman. Most people think that everybody has to agree what's bad and good. I know, but that, but, right. but the, I, the reason she agreed to talk to me in the first place, I assume, is because she knows that I don't operate that way. So no, we do have nobody, some basis. Nobody knows that. <laughs> I, so again, from personal relationship experience, friendship, you can say that you operate a certain way. Nobody believes you. Nobody will believe you until it comes to a point to where it's tested, and then people are going to treat you like a monster or like you're inhuman. Nobody believes you are the way you are until they've had first-hand experience with it, no matter how you say it. I'll, that, that's just absolutely true. So even if you say something like, hey, I'm very honest and I explore conversations. So why do you think she agreed to talk to me then? Um, probably because she genuinely finds your mind interesting, and she didn't know that she was going to have to defend what her, her past that much. She thought we would go easy on each other. Maybe, yeah. Yeah, because she felt like, I because I talk 
I'm not leaking it. I talked to her later that night about the conversation and her impression was she felt like you were attacking her like everybody else. And she thought that since you had bad stuff in your past, you would kind of go easy on it because she has bad stuff in her past. But the reality is, is you haven't gone easy on your own past. You fully understood and integrated all of those experiences and she hasn't. That's the difference. Okay. So, um, I don't think that's my responsibility. Do you? So I'm not here to care about the moral bullshit or whatever. But I, I am. I don't care. That's what. I, that's but that's what we keep coming back to. You're very sure. Okay. An no, 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 no. I'm not. I'm not. What I'm saying is that, like, if you want to have a conversation with somebody and you have a certain end in mind, I it's don't. just important to be aware of that end. Okay. I so don't. now, if your so if your response to me is destiny. I actually don't give a fuck where my conversations end up. That's not this true either. Those are those are that that's well, not true. They are. These are diametrically opposed. You got to choose one no, or the other. No, no, no. That's Absolutely. not true. I, I not giving a fuck mm -hmm. is different from not trying to control something. I can care where the conversation goes without doing everything in my power to make it go there. But if you care where a conversation goes, you're going to exert some level of influence moving it there. Maybe Absolutely. Not full, unlike uh, sub mind subconsciously, manipulation. for sure. Subconsciously, I not am subconsciously, trying... consciously making choices in the con so when you ask no, no, a no, question, I care like, more about the thing, right? I, I care more about the choices than I care about the end goal. I care more about how I conduct myself. I care more about mm -hmm. the morality of how I'm conducting myself in a conversation than I care about whether it goes where I want it to go. Mm hmm. That's like fine. you see, but you just, see that there's a balancing. You just have to understand act. that, yeah. It's not, well, it's not a balancing act. That's the problem. Is you have to you, okay? You think you just have to pick one? Well, at some point, you might run into an area where these things become binary. You can either do one or either do the other. You're not always going to be able. I to... choose. I choose the moral derailment of the conversation into okay. endless meta fighting over getting the cat to expose its belly so I can gut it. Sure, you can do that. That's your, it's your prerogative. I think it's wrong. But just be aware I think it's that. wrong. Okay, I would disagree, but okay. Why? Why do? Why do you disagree that it's wrong? Because I think it's it can be okay to have a purpose in mind for a conversation. That doesn't mean you have to be like the most virtuous. Like when when I argue with certain very radical people. My goal is not to bring them 100% to my side. Usually my goal is to get like some level of agreement in some kind of central area and then just give them like a little bit to think about, even though I could push harder. So like Lauren Southern is a good example of this. A lot of my community hates the way that I interact with Lauren Southern because mm -hmm. I'm not constantly having to like hold her to account. You know, you need to talk about what you did. We need to talk about the boats. I don't care as much about that. I disagree about a lot of what she did related to it and I could have a big argument with her about it, but I don't really think it would accomplish much. Like she's really dug into everything about that. I'm not gonna force some level of introspection from her or maybe I could over time, but rather what I would hope to do is if I can win you over on enough of these other level positions, at some point, we're gonna have enough rapport that if that conversation comes up, I'm gonna have a lot of ability to push in a little bit harder than other people because I've proven myself to be a good actor. I'm not somebody just trying to destroy you or fuck you over. And maybe I can even offer a little bit of insight into your own thoughts. But that will destroy her. I don't think so. Okay, you do we both agree that there? if I had been nicer, mm -hmm. I probably could have gotten her to say a lot more about the about the boats for sure um i could i probably could have gotten her to like cry depending maybe i don't know if she's like but there's maybe. probably some combination of things i could have done yeah. to get her to not not out of remorse but out of something some feeling mm -hmm. about the accusation or what happened or how big of a part sure. it's played in her. okay I um that's I don't think that's right. Okay. It's it's weird that you're giving me this advice going into an interview with you. Well, I, we're, the way that we talk is going to be different than how you talk with any other person, so it doesn't really matter. Okay, so you want me to you want me to be forthright with you. I don't as forthright want you as, to do anything. Direct, I just want you to be aware well, of what do you what want do you want me you? to try to manipulate you into telling me things you can, that, you, listen. that you don't want to tell me? You can do whatever you want to do, but I'm just saying be aware. Of <laughs> no, it. you're I, saying you're, you're saying you're saying I can try and that I'll fail. I'm saying that if you have conversations, no, no, no. I'm saying if you have conversations in certain ways, it's going to cause certain things to happen, and you just have to be aware of that. If you don't give a fuck, then I mean that's fine. And but I'm not trying to present like my style of conversation is right or wrong, even if it feels that way. 
kind of like how Lauren felt like you were calling her evil, even, even if you weren't actually <laughs> calling her evil, right? Because I haven't said anything about your style of conversation. I'm just saying that like, if you have a style of conversation that is more confrontational, if you haven't earned a lot of rapport with a the person, then they're going to get really defensive and locked down. And you're not going to get much farther into the conversation, I don't think. Okay. But if you want to do that, fuck it. Go for it. I do. Okay. And I'm, I'm going to do it right now. <laughs> okay. I'm an open person. So you can be as, as whatever you want with me. I'm fine. But uh, You're guarded. Not really. You don't think so? No, but kind of. It's kind of, It's a little weird. Okay. I feel like I've, there's a few topics I want to talk to you about. Okay. Um, uh, either your conversation with Doctor K or my conversation with Molina. Things where I want to. I feel like I feel like there's just like. Uh, also, do you do you look at your subreddit? Yeah, all the time. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So they their opinion of me is like, all over the place. It, it was it was good, and then it was very suspicious there's like a jerk wave then there, if there's too much of somebody there's going to be a counter jerk wave and then yeah. there will be like a counter counter jerk wave that's just like the the nature of the internet yeah. okay so they have talked about they've mentioned me betraying you or me being a sociopath or me being super needy and wanting to talk to you all the time or wanting your attention or wanting your uh, airtime on your streams mm-hmm uh, and then they've talked about uh, us having some horrible falling out, or they talk about me becoming a, a gigantic streamer and then betraying you somehow. Yeah. And then Melina, uh, I think, touched on all of those in one way or another. Um, what do you... I guess... Okay, so I, I've always talked about like the power differential between us, where you're like a huge streamer and I'm I'm like nobody. Mm -hmm. But I'm less nobody now. Okay. So where I feel like, um, as I become less nobody, I benefit less financially from each conversation we have. Mm -hmm. which gives you less control over me in a career way. Like, I, okay. like I, 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 I am becoming more your equal. Self-sufficient. Yeah. Like, not it's your not equal in terms of... But... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't mean your equal in terms of size. I just mean in terms of um, uh, how much I could be using you. That that amount that has to be that's decreased significantly. Okay. Right. Do you agree on that? Uh, yeah, of course. It logically, you don't like you don't like being used. I don't care if I'm used. I think it's, it depends on who's using me for what. Well, okay, I don't like being used. I feel like I'm learning oh, okay. more about what it must be like to be you, as sure. more and more people try to use me. I'm having the, like, I'm, I've never had this experience before, but over the last two weeks, uh. Okay. everybody's people are sending me like oh have you talked to this person blah 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 you might be into blah, blah blah everybody's doing i've never i've never had the experience of somebody doing someone else a favor by telling me their name and this must happen to you all the time of somebody else doing you a favor by someone someone doing you. someone else a favor someone being like just just these imagined conversation like you know the conversation went like yeah i, I know destiny I'll, I'll send him a dm and like I'll, I'll mention you and like I'm not sure if he's gonna really want to talk to you but we'll see we'll see what he says mm -hmm. uh, okay. I don't like it okay I, f I feel um yeah I, f I feel used increasingly by more and more people why don't you like and it Cause they don't, they're not, they don't like me. Mm -hmm. They like money. They don't care. They don't care about me. Have they you care developed? About the do you feel like you have some way? 
Yeah, do you feel like you have some way of weeding out those types of people, I guess, that contact you, or...? No, because a lot of them also genuinely like you. Mm -hmm. Even even uh, some of my friends, they're like really excited. And they're excited about the channel in a way that they've never been before. Okay. And it's like, well, you're not really excited about the channel. You're excited about like fame and power. But that's not me. It has nothing to do with me. Yeah. Kind of an inevitable part of growing is that your personal relationships could potentially take on a different form uh, but i mean that's going to be unavoidable right um like yeah it sucks have you thought at all about how to I guess divine from people their intentions in associating with you or to figure out is that possible i mean yeah sure i can i can become more i can you're saying just be go scarface and be more paranoid uh maybe i don't know depends how much it bothers you it bothers me a lot okay well Okay, so in terms of you and me, do do we do we agree that this dynamic is decreasing as I grow, or? Insofar as the dynamic exists and could be observed by some people, yeah, it's probably decreasing. I'm asking you what you think. This is an. Interview. I don't care about this. This is something I don't care about at all. If there are because girls it... out there that want to fuck me for fame, or if there are people that think they can leech off my thing to be more popular, as long as I'm having a good time, I truly don't give a fuck. I don't care. So I can be cognizant of any dynamic that exists, but. Like, it's just not something that I'm really that concerned about. It doesn't bother you? No. Uh, okay, I guess my view is that it doesn't bother you because you're so paranoid that trusting people at all just seems, like, unthinkable. So you're like, fuck it, they're all... all I mean, like, you said to Dr. K that all you think all relationships are transactional. Or you view them all that way. So therefore, if they're all transactional, you might as well just say none of them are transactional. Because it's not it's no more transactional than any other relationship, if you think they all are. There are two ways that you can go with this. Um, and if you want to do the first way, we can do the first way. Um, but I, I can tell you. So when somebody's in my position, there's two possibilities. Either one, they are incredibly guarded and they shut down some part of them so that they don't associate with people too deeply because they're so afraid of getting hurt that they yeah. don't want to expose part of themselves yeah which is sounds like what you're assuming of me um the second part and this is the only answer i can give you and you can assume i'm lying if you want but i truly just don't really care that much um, i have an internal view of myself i have an internal view of what i want what makes me happy there are certain people in my life that i can utilize to achieve those ends that are fun to hang out with if there's some mutually beneficial thing that they gain off of me whether it's cloud or something like that i really don't really care that much it's just not something okay. i think about yeah so your sense of being used does not subtract from your sense of being loved. Um, I'm not looking for love from other people. I'm usually just looking for positive experiences. You don't want love. No, I'm not that kind of person, no. Melina? From Melina, I probably do, yeah. Because she's my wife. But if I felt like yeah. she was starting to just use me for things, that would probably bother me, yeah. Okay. Love from Melina and I assume a couple other family members. Uh, and my son, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I want love. I want people to love me. Okay. You're finding that as a content creator is going to be very difficult because. Yeah. People are highly incentivized to present one thing and conceal their true intentions, right? Because they have a lot. Yeah, of yeah. Mm -hmm. I want people to love. Me. I want people who already love me to not stop loving me and use me instead. Okay. What do you think about that? 
uh, it's going to depend from relationship to relationship. Do you um, feel? How, do you? Yeah. Do you feel that um, you have lost any th of that? Um, I've never really had very many friends, not close friends that I care about that much. So, Pro growing up, I probably only really had like two close friends, and then these okay. days, I probably have like less than five, maybe. Um, are you worried I will betray you somehow? Not really, but I try not to worry about things I don't have much control over. It seems like I would just be robbing myself of any, like, immediate happiness or satisfaction by doing it. If it happens in the future, it happens, but, like, why would I not enjoy everything leading up to it? I think, don't you think you way? could enjoy our relationship more if you trusted me more? Not really, because it's not like there's some part of me that you have don't have access to, like just I think because there of is. my thoughts. Like what? Uh, your heart. <laughs> there's not that much part, in there. There is. <laughs> okay. I you have to admit, uh, I'm I seem like a pretty trustworthy person. Probably, maybe, maybe not. I'm not like sure, if there were like if you were gonna trust like a streamer, who just random. I guess I wasn't a streamer. You made me into a streamer. But if you're gonna trust like a guy, a content creator that just like showed up, I feel like I'm a pretty good candidate for someone to trust. Even though the situation certainly does not lend itself to trust. That's what I'm. That's what I'm. I. You know what I think. I think I came. I. I like I met you and I was like, this is great. Like I. He's uh -huh. platforming me, but also. I, 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 I like you and like we can huh. talk to each other and you're helping huh. me uh, and and um, helping me navigate this confusing mess um, and like I just have to I just have to like show him that I'm like a trustworthy person like uh, of course uh -huh. but now uh, just two weeks into my own little career I see uh, you can't trust anyone yeah everyone is everyone is lying well, so then, so then, I, I, so then, I feel embarrassed. I feel embarrassed that I, I thought I could, um, seem trustworthy enough to you. You're, because I, you're, you're probably one. You you would be somebody that I would have the least trust in for a long period of time. Um, hmm. Why is, is that? Yeah. So, I, I approach all of these topics in a very. Um, I'll say autistic way or inhuman way, maybe. So this is gonna sound a little bit weird, but I think when um I think when a lot of people look at somebody they trust, they think of like, okay, I feel like a warm connection to this person, and they seem like they genuinely care about me, so they wouldn't do anything to hurt me. Does that sound right? I don't think you're not human. Okay, I, well, I'm just asking a basic question. Don't jump ahead of me. <laughs> I, well, no, you already said that. So. Sure. Well, but I don't, okay, I think... I'll skip ahead then. The way that I view trust is, yeah. does somebody have more to gain or, or more to lose by, I guess, like backstabbing me or betraying me is usually yes. how I view it. But as long own... as somebody has more to lose than they would then to gain by backstabbing me, then I could, this is that's, probably that's, a trustworthy person. That's not right? trust. That's literally not the sure. definition of tr trust. I, trust, would, trust would you're be. Talk, but that's, that's trust I understand be, what you're saying. Yeah. Trust would be if I have more to gain by backstabbing you and you still believe and ha and put faith in and behave as though and still show me the cat belly anyway because you trust yeah i don't believe that, that. i don't trust you, anybody like that you, i don't think that's true well that's that's then that's you don't trust anybody no okay if that's what i'm showing you then yeah i don't trust anybody so for i think somebody i already like you, i already then... have more to gain by betraying you than i do by being friends with you i don't think you have anything to gain by betraying me right now no <laughs> i think so like what people like fights people like drama i don't know yeah, why did okay. why did vosh and hassan do it um hassan did it because he was threatened by me a little bit and i think he has uh, self-esteem issues do you think and... it hurt his career 
No, he had a lot to gain from it career-wise because there was a rift growing between our two communities where there was a genuine thirst in my community for somebody more far left. So he had a lot to gain by severing that connection and then working on continuing to build his own stuff and then capitalizing on the exodus of fans from me. When okay, he did that. okay, yeah. okay. So, mm -hmm. so betraying you now would be premature. I have to wait until I can define myself against you, develop, yeah. a, a cultivate a thirst for it, and then force a break. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so uh <laughs> So that's why you still trust me. I see. Well, yeah, and you have like very little to lose by fucking around too. Like I like you, you there's a lot of you on the internet. You've been attacked in a lot of ways. Um so I, I like I, I feel like you could backstab me and you not it's not like it's gonna hurt you at all. So that's why when I say like do I trust this person, like if, if I'm dealing with like a private citizen, for instance, somebody that's not a public internet figure, I would have a high degree of trust in that person because if they fuck me over, they're, they publicly, their lives can be destroyed. So I feel well, like I'm, this person well, will I'm, never I'm, do I'm, like that. Yeah. I'm uncancelable and you don't a have bit, a, lot yeah. of, a lot of leverage over me. Yeah, basically it comes down to leverage and I have none of that. And I don't think I could ever get that over somebody like you. So. Not that okay. it matters, by the way. I like... I understand why so, it bothers you because you feel like there's a deeper level of a relationship you can access once that trust part has been established. But that's not really how it works with me. I don't really have like that. Like, you don't oh, have that deeper that I, level. Now that I trust you, like, oh my God, we can share in these experiences. Like, I'm about as willing to engage in any experience somebody wants to, assuming I'm not going to get like fucking destroyed or something. Like, I'm not going to buy a house with you or something. But, you know, basically everything else is on the table. I think that's a great idea. Then we would have to trust each other. Okay. Get a vacation house? Yeah, what maybe? Yeah. Just let me save for uh, five years. Gotcha. <clears throat> okay. So yeah, that I, I that makes me sad. Well, I'm sorry. Don't be sad. Because I I I I actually trust you. You should. I'm a pretty trustworthy person. I have a long history of I don't fuck I people over unless they attack me publicly. I'm like a pretty helpful person. Well, yeah, person. but it's like, pretty. Yeah. It's, it's it's one way though, right? <clears throat> I mean, like I trust you in the definition of even if you had a lot to gain by fucking me over, I don't think you would. Yeah, I don't think I would. I think I'm a pretty trustworthy person. You know what? You know what the problem with your calculation is? What's the problem? You only. Um, you're assuming everyone. Uh, is a sociopath because no i wish well, they were let me I, let me I, let, let, right, me, let me let me explain because yeah. you're when you weigh what i have to gain versus what i have to lose you mm -hmm. place nothing on uh the emotional pain it would cause me to hurt you you place nothing on me caring about your well-being you place nothing on morality that is not factored into your calculation it is uh subscribers money social standing things like that that is the only thing that factors in mm -hmm. so you so you in your evaluation of who to trust you assume everyone is a, a psychopath i think that or morality be. is nothing nobody thinks about morality they might have like an intuitive feeling of what might make them feel good or bad but nobody's thinking of like morality when they're thinking about fucking somebody over i think i do i think at one point in time i considered this you might but you'd be the exception so at one point in time i considered how i associated with people because um when I associate with people, something that I've learned through my 20s is I have to kind of make a lot of guesses about the emotional states of people and how that'll influence how they make decisions. Because I think I don't make decisions in the same way sometimes, but a lot of other okay. people seem to. So for a while, I think it led me to be a little bit, um, I, I people acted in ways that I didn't expect. It's like, well, hold on. How can this person fuck me over? Like, I haven't done anything like that fucked up to you. Or how can a person do this? This is like really weird to me. I feel like I've done so much. But I think what I've kind of learned recently is when somebody's fucking somebody over, the reason there aren't any bad feelings that they have to deal with because in everybody else's mind they've always convinced themselves that they're in the right for doing so so they don't actually have to deal with those types of bad feelings because they're always the hero of their own story and they always have good justification for the reasons they're acting so i think it's a little bit of a waste of time for me to try to guess like okay well objectively i've done like a decent amount of shit for you how the fuck can you do this to me because in their mind they've already convinced themselves well destiny's a horrible person he's done this horrible shit like wait, i wait. can do this and it's actually okay can, can you give me a real life example of somebody who you think has no 
qualms. So about... Vosh is somebody who only exists on the internet because of me, because I'm willing to talk to smaller creators, because I was willing to plug him as much as I could early on, because I gave him a big presence in my chat. He was involved in a sexual harassment scandal that I covered up for him, kind of. I deleted the video off my YouTube channel. I I would always tell him like, <laughs> hey, like, like I did a lot of stuff to help him early on. That would yeah. be somebody that in my mind, if I was in his position, I feel like I would always have a debt there. There's no possible way that I could like turn my back on this other person and be like, you're a horrible piece of shit or whatever. Um, okay. But he did, um, because there was more to gain publicly. But I think in his mind, I don't think he's thinking like, oh God, like, you know, me and Destiny, we were kind of friends, we had this, and I'm good, this is gonna hurt a lot. I think in his mind, he's already thought like, okay, Destiny is actually an evil, horrible person. I don't even think he likes me at all. I think he's actually like an evil fuck and I need to do this because it's the right thing to do. So I might be trying to project onto him some emotional state that he doesn't have because from his point of view, he's already convinced himself that he's correct in everything that he's doing. So that would be like one out of, I can give you like half a dozen other real life examples of people acting. I, I, I might want a couple, but do you think, um, you think most people are like Vosh in that way? Yeah, for sure. I think that's a pretty normal human thing to do. We think of ourselves as like a good person usually. Also, to be clear, because when we have these conversations, I'm talking about how other people talk about. I'm not a perfect person either. Like I've made mistakes and I've done bad things to people too. So I mean, like it's not like yeah, I'm yeah, not yeah. saying that like I'm a perfect person and everybody's sure, fucking sure. over. Sure, sure. Yeah, whatever. Just to be clear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever, whatever. I have to give the caveat for the audience. Yeah, but. I understand. Vosh, um, I feel like there's some selection bias where you're taking Vosh's public statements. Uh, mm -hmm. the stuff he says to his friends might be or like if he has a therapist it's probably different i think i i agree that vash's presentation is as someone who has no self-doubt or qualms about anything he does but we don't do we know that's actually how he is i think he has a considerable amount of self-doubt um but he conceals this might that sound, yeah but this might sound like some pop psych bullshit but the usually when i see somebody that is acting in a very alpha or an incredibly like I need you to know how confident I am. Um, yeah. To me, that usually comes across as being a little bit uh, concealing uh, of some kind of insecurity. That's how I and, and so an insecurity that he's aware of. Well, he's either completely aware of it or he's trying to cover it up and trying to suppress it. But yeah. Okay. Also, another selection bias problem. Uh -huh. um, Vosh, and uh, like most streamers, uh -huh. or all streamers. Be became popular because he seems to be very confident in himself and his positions. People are very drawn to that. Yeah. So I guess I just don't agree that most people... Um, I think most people are more like Lauren Southern, where, like, part of her is very confident in her decisions and part of her mm -hmm. is not and like sure she has this, but you she only has wear you only show the confident part you never want people to know the parts you're not confident absolutely about. but the other part is there I, f I feel like i feel like only in like really crazy that's why i think you that's why i think you're assuming everybody might be a sociopath because i don't um, think people are sociopaths i think people are predictably I, selfish but just to be clear you're, but you're describing an extreme level of selfishness, I think. I, I think it's level. a totally normal, but I might just be very cynical. I think, pe I think everybody I, is what, very selfish. That's what I'm saying is, I think you're very sure. cynical. I, okay. I mean, even but, at the beginning of the conversation, being... you're like, Max, you're talking to people like they're uh, not stupid. Yeah, but they need are. to talk like they're dumb. My, my, you can call me cynical, but I don't assume everybody is a sociopath. I think people are like pretty predictably selfish, is what I would say. Yes, I know that you don't think that you are assuming everybody's a sociopath. I'm just pointing out that you do not factor the morality or anybody else caring about you into any mm -hmm. of these calculations. Well, I think people care about you to the extent that you provide something to them. And once you don't provide that thing or if they can get something better from somewhere else and they'll switch. That's how I view it. So you it think sounds if sociopathic you... when I say it that way, but I think the feelings and other no, people... No, it just sounds like you're... Like you, uh, I've been backstabbed too many times. Okay. I want to put some shea butter on your back wounds. Okay. That's a, okay. <laughs> I think that. Uh,
I, I yeah, I'm challenging the way you're thinking about it because like you think if you became homeless mm -hmm. and like say you were involved in some I don't know. Say you'd been like not paying your taxes and you lost all your money and you got banned you, and you said the N word on Twitch a bunch so you got banned. Mm -hmm. Uh and and then everybody thought you were neo Nazi so your payment processors pulled out and you just it was impossible for you to stream or make money and you became homeless. So at this point, um, I have nothing to gain from you. You think that I would just, me and everyone else would just disappear? Um, I think we would probably still talk. You seem like that kind of person, but I could be wrong. What kind of person um, is that? Somebody that is interested in talking to me because you think I'm interesting. Because I can gain something. I'm like, <laughs> satisfy yeah, what you're my morbid is... curiosity. Show me around your box. Show me around your cardboard box. I do, I'm just curious to see what it would be I like. I think that it's hard to find people with minds that are put together in such a way that you can have an engaging conversation that goes from like a fifth level abstraction down to like a first level abstraction. So when you run into those people, I think that the conversation is generally like pretty good. So the other person that Melina brought up before, I had a real life friend named Byron. He had absolutely nothing to gain by associating with me ever, but he really appreciated it. He liked it a lot because we could have conversations that he couldn't have with other people oftentimes. So I would assume you're kind of similar. I mean, maybe not, but it seems like it. Yeah, I've heard uh, people have to multiple people, including Melina, have told me that uh -huh. I remind you of him. Yeah. Um, and I've seen people on your subreddit commenting about uh, being worried about how sensitive I am emotionally. Okay. Does that worry you? What people? I don't worry about what people on my subreddit think. No, 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 no. My sensitivity. Um, a little bit. It doesn't worry about us talking. I just think it inhibits some of your conversations sometimes. I'm used to talking to sensitive people. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Wait, wait. What kind of person was Byron, or what? What is the what is the comparison you're making? Um, he's just like he very much had like a full way of kind of like looking at the world, and if I gave him. There's like a broad way that I could explain people. I don't know if this dichotomy fits for every single human being, but there's like a broad thing that people can do. I can give somebody an idea and there's two ways that they could process it. The 99% of people is I give you an idea and the first thing you do is you run down every group that you belong to to figure out how you're supposed to respond to it and then you give me that expected response. This is the vast majority of conversations. What do you think about like this movie? Okay, well, what did XYZ YouTuber movie reviewer think about it? What are the popular media at the time? This is what blah, 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 blah. And that's how like most people do it occasionally very rarely um you run into a person you're like well what do you think about this movie and you can tell that they have some internal schema that they're actually like holding this to to generate some novel thought that's coming directly from them and recful was able to do that with a lot of stuff you seem able to do that with a lot of stuff hopefully i'm able to do that with a lot of stuff but yeah th those are the more interesting people to talk to for me because then you're talking to the person and not the um yeah, I don't need to know what society's popular view of something is. I can just go look at fucking Reddit or Wikipedia or some shit. Um, I don't need you to regurgitate to me um, whatever the most popular reviewer or, you know, ideas about something. I don't need that. Um, I wasn't sure if I wanted to bring up Reckful. Okay. Uh, okay. A couple... Uh, uh, it's all tied together. I talked to Melina. Melina talked about you. Talked about Reckful. Talked about Dr. K. Uh, I watched your you watch a video about Reckful and Dr. K. Okay. Um. My fans want me to talk to Dr. K. I don't think Dr. K wants to talk to me. It all feels interconnected. Oh, also. You told Melina not to let me mind fuck her. Oh, that was like a passing joking comment. I feel like you read way more into that than. Yeah, I did. Oh. And then I told. Her, and then I told Melina. Situation, and I thought it was correct. 
and you were arguing against her that it wasn't correct, but I thought she was right. But I was worried she was starting to doubt herself because you're pretty good at convincing people otherwise, even when yeah. I so you was correct. not really a joke. It's it's well, yeah. I guess about what you mean by mind fuck, but yeah. Well, you meant it, but it also was funny. Okay, best kind of humor <laughs> has an element yes. of truth to it. I, well, or it is just completely truth. Um, sure. Do you want to jump in? And, and so I've just laid out a m- merry-go-round of t- interconnected topics. Um, do you want to steer clear of all of them, or do you want to talk about any of them? Talk about whatever you want, whatever your heart desires. Okay. Of course, she'll say that. Um, let's start with Melina. Okay. What do you think about? Uh, do you think I mind fucked her? No, I don't think so. She's got okay. like a pretty strong mind, generally. Yeah. Um, she's pretty pushy. She can be, yeah. But I think if you're dating me, that the girl is always going to be kind of like that. Because if you're not that, you're yeah, going to get she steamrolled. Has to be. And absolutely, I'm going to get absolutely. really bored really quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think I'm going to attack Doctor K. Okay. Um. I don't like what he's doing. Yep, I remember that part of the conversation. And after watching you react to the guy's video slash video about Wreckful and Dr. K, I like what he's doing less. But I already wanted to attack him. Not not attack, but uh, a, a sale. Yeah, a challenge, a challenge. Um, what do you, what did you think of Dr. K's video with Molina? Um, fuck. It's been a while since I've watched it. He tried to convince her to, that she wants to have, I, well, this is a short version. Try to convince her that being non-monogamous with you is her sacrificing herself to make you happy. And then, um like got her to cry a few times about it and then basically told her like are you going to keep living for other people or are you going to like be your own person and and stand up for yourself basically i think that when you hit on something that's exceptional in a person's life being in an open relationship is a pretty exceptional thing like an exception to the norm i think it's to okay to question no to 99 percent of humans okay or 98 percent of humans i think it's okay to push into that area to see how they feel about it um, and it wouldn't surprise me that somebody would ask questions like, do you really want to do this? How do you feel about this? It's causing you problems. Like, are these problems that you want? Are you doing this for yourself or for somebody else? I think it's a fair line of questioning. I think it's wildly inappropriate. Wait, oh, wait, wait. No, no. How did you mm-hmm. feel? How do you feel? How did you feel watching it? Um, Whether pretty... it's fair or not, like, do you, this guy is trying to shut down your shit. You got no problem with that? Um, if Melina decided that she wanted a different type of relationship, that's her <laughs> decision to make. And if somebody else can talk her out of the one that we're in right now, that means she feels way less strongly about it than I do. So the only thing he could possibly be doing is exposing some fracture that's just going to grow over time anyway. So he would be shortcutting the process. Okay. Whether you... Okay. So you believe he's stress testing Melina, <laughs> but do you do you... So you, you're okay with... In a way, him? that's literally want... kind of my approach to open relationships. That's why I don't care if my partner fucks somebody else, because if they do, and then they leave me... It's stress like testing the whole more. relationship. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, okay, well, fuck it. I guess we're going to work anyway. Like, I'm not going to sit here and pretend to be monogamous, and then, like, you cheat on me. So, like, I don't give a fuck about that. Like, go have fun with other people. If you like somebody else more, then, I mean, go have a relationship with them. Not going to out. Yeah. If you betray me, you betray me. I mean, I wouldn't consider it a betrayal. I mean, what are the chances of 7 billion people that I'm the best match for you? Like, if you can find somebody else, like, don't let me hold you down. But that's what love love is. 
when you still care about somebody and still want to be with them, even if they're not the best match, or even if they can't provide you with anything. Even I don't ever want to be that person in somebody else's life, so I wouldn't want that person to expect me of them as well. I think there's like a certain but love. But then you won't sacrifice. be in anybody's life. You're saying it's like you're saying you only deserve mm -hmm. to have love or friendship if you are the best person. Or if you, at least it feels like, like it it's a time. meritocracy. Now, things that can build into the best can be things that are hard for other people to match. So, for instance, part of the reason why me and Melina are well, I, right now the best for each other is because we have like three years of experience with each other. I wouldn't expect her to meet somebody, even if they're slightly better than me in other aspects, to all of a sudden meet and beat like that shared history that we have, you know? Like, you do build on things. Do you not understand why I think that is cynical and sad? Yeah, of course, I understand. Are you, you're you're not engaging with that. I I don't have that part of me to that that cares about that. So I like I can, I can try I can restate it back to you, and you can tell me if I understand what you're saying. Oh, but... I know you understand it. You're just not okay. Then I yeah, there's like I like you're trying to when you talk around it, it feels like you're trying to evoke some sense of longing or melancholy or sadness in it, but i just really don't care that much it's not something I no really no no about. i you know uh -huh. it's i'm not trying to evoke anything if you i just okay. want you to say i want you to say you don't care about I, just want you to, I, I just want you to, to answer i don't care if if melina is finding somebody better than me i mean like i guess no, do, just do you care or... do you do you get why the idea that you have to be the best possible person and the best possible friend at all times and if not and if someone wants to just trade you for somebody else then you're fine with that you're just it's like at any moment you're just waiting to be betrayed so much so that you don't you don't even call it a betrayal I don't think I'd get betrayed, though. I think I'm a pretty cool person. I, I have so a hard time believing that mo like somebody I'm close to and spend a great deal of time being close to is just going to trade me out very easily. I would hope you, that isn't the case. But, you, but you're also an asshole. By your own admission. The first time we talked, mm -hmm. you were like, in my mm -hmm. personal life, I'm an asshole. So, I am an aggressive person, conversationally and comedically, I guess. But I'm not genuinely mean to people. And I think that's a thing a lot of people have a hard time understanding. Um, if I I'm think you're talking, mean sometimes. I'm very, very rarely my man. It's incredible. I think rare. I think you make cutting remarks sometimes. Almost and only to people that I'm like genuinely fighting with, but never to like a friend. Like there are things that I could joke about with Mr. Mooton or Dan or Melina if I just wanted to be mean, but I stay away from those topics pretty far. And if you ever have the chance to interview people I've been with on stream a lot in the past, you can even ask Lauren. Like there are times where I'll tell people, I'm like in DMs, be like, hey, if there's like a topic that you don't want me to touch or you don't want me to joke about or something you want to stay up, like I'm totally cool staying off of that. Like when I'm being mean, it's like mean in a funny way that I hope they can push back on and deal with, but it's not like I'm trying to find what are the things that hurt you the most that I'm gonna joke about. That's not usually my approach or it's never my approach. It's something I'm trying to be friendly with. Do you think you have a reputation for being mean? Yeah, but I think it's because most people don't understand <clears throat> what that means. Are we having a semantic problem? No, it's a it's a relation, like understanding how other people feel. Um, people, here's like the issue, okay? Somebody will see me with a girl, okay? And a girl says something like, I really like Blink-182. And I say, Blink-182, that's a dog shit band. Why do you listen to such garbage music? And then like we'll laugh and joke about it and somebody will see that behavior and they're like okay i'm gonna be like destiny so then they find a girl in real life like hey what's up and the girl's like hey how's it going and the guy's like you're really fucking fat <laughs> like I'm, I'm i'm doing like the destiny thing where i'm being mean to them and now it's gonna be, and they're like wait this doesn't work at all and i've seen fans like firsthand that are like friends of friends interact with people like that I'm like oh this guy's like a really big fan of you so he's an asshole to everybody and then when i say they talk i'm like wait hold on hold on this guy's not being like mean funny. This guy's just being really mean. Like these aren't like jokes. There's not like everybody can share in and laugh and go back and forth. He's just like really fucking mean. Um, so I think people have a hard time 
it's it's I, i'll call it like chemistry or something where i say like the way that you associate with people but i can sure. find people and joke with them in aggressive ways that's pushing or testing boundaries but it's actually like done in a really respectful manner and i'm not actually trying to upset somebody or actually trying to dig in and make somebody feel bad about themselves okay and so i think people... sometimes people yeah people see me do that and they think oh that's just just being mean but there's like a there's like a dance or a process here where i'm actually being pretty careful at what i'm joking about Okay, so you think that people are misunderstanding these interactions. They're sure. misreading both you and the person you're supposedly being mean to. Mm -hmm. You're being aggressive and playful, but you generally are not mean. For sure. Okay. Um... How do you feel about me uh, criticizing Dr. K? Um, I understand your criticism. Um, it's going to come down to like, uh, you, you seem a little bit more like action oriented, like as a particular action, good or bad. Whereas I'm like a little bit more, well, let's see how it affects everybody oriented. So like Dr. K, you can argue is like, okay, well this trying this quasi like entertainment slash therapy is a little bit irresponsible. But I think uh -huh. at the end of the day, I'll say, well, how many people are now engaging in more productive conversations about their mental health? Even if he is like a little bit exploitative, I think at the end of the day, it's worth it. I have an advice show. Uh -huh. Have you seen it at all? Um, I've seen a, a couple things of it, but I've been traveling like this whole past week. So I haven't seen much of anything yet. Oh, well, I, I, I'm not taking it personally. I'm just curious. Oh, well, I just answered the question. It wasn't meant to be personal or not personal. Well, it felt personal. Okay. I don't watch it because it sucks. Why the fuck would just, I take advice from just you? Like You're a fucking one... loser. Just <laughs> like 182. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I wrestle with like the responsibility of that. <clears throat> Some okay. of my mods and, and the Discord mods were like, we should we should have like a resource center because every 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 call almost every call ends with me telling the person to go to therapy sure. which is not helpful but yeah why not i hate it when people say that because it's like every advice like go to therapy it's like okay well i'm talking to you obviously because i'm not in therapy don't fucking tell me to go to therapy but you should yeah everybody should if they have problems that they feel like they can't resolve with themselves yeah uh do you think Vash should go to therapy? Um, I don't know if I know him personally enough to say if he should. What if you had, to, what if you had to guess? If I had to guess, I'd say probably not. I think most of his problems lie with like trying to be a public figure and making money and growing his platform, not with having like actual self issues that he needs a therapist to diagnose. He should retire. I don't. Why should he retire? Well, I. He's having problems. We agree with that, right? What do you mean? How? I don't know. He just seems like a troubled person. Oh, I don't think so. He seems like he's doing really well. He's got two channels that are both doing pretty well. He's got a pretty loyal audience. He's making a ton of money. He grew incredibly quickly in like a year. He basically hit my size on YouTube. Um, well, those are just numbers. Sure. And so far as his personal life goes, I don't watch the streams to know. But maybe, I, maybe is his do you think his personal life is like really bad or something? Or... I think maybe we have different definitions of what when someone seems troubled. To me, I mean, I'm he, just looking from a business. He seems like he's on the verge of of like snapping at all times. He Does seems he? like he, yeah, kind of, yeah. Oh, I don't think so. He seems pretty normal. He, I think that he approaches some people, me especially, with a very big amount of vitriol. Um, but he doesn't seem like he's close to snapping or anything. But okay, I guess I guess maybe I think a lot more people should go to therapy than you think. Do you think Maybe. I should go to therapy? Um, I don't know you enough to say. I'm not sure. Just, you don't want to guess? Probably not. I don't think so. But maybe if you want to. <laughs> okay. I'm not and sure. You'd, and you don't think you should go to therapy? Absolutely not. Why not? Because I ain't got the time for that. I'm trying to climb the masters on the rift. Okay. I'm going big with Mr. Witness season elite. 
I think that therapists are there to provide you tools to deal with issues in your life that you feel like you don't have the ability to deal with. And I don't feel like there are any parts of my life that I'm incapable of dealing with. So I need some external like motivator or somebody to supply me with the tools to analyze or deal with things. I have a different view of therapy. Okay. I think the therapist is there to provide you with unconditional support and love in a safely transactional relationship or not not love but intimacy unconditional intimacy and caretaking in a transactional relationship which provides uh safety in the transactionality so you know if you pay your whatever 123 dollars uh -huh. then um they're going to show up for you and you don't have to worry about that calculation that you do when you decide if you can trust somebody is uh -huh. completely removed. Okay. You can't, totally you can't trust them. About... Okay. What do you disagree about? I don't think a therapist should be there to provide unconditional anything. I think a therapist should serve to challenge you in some ways. Now he's challenged you in a way that isn't attacking you, but it's to sure. provide you with some level of insight or tools to like, Ab absolutely. I'm not saying they shouldn't challenge you. I'm saying unconditional okay. in the sense that they're not going to leave or disappear if you do or say something they don't like. Oh, obviously, sure. obviously there's, agree, there's yeah. a, yeah, there's a limit. Like if you tr like try to grope them or something like, yeah, sure. you're going to be gone. But I'm saying that okay, sure. beyond a normal friendship or even normal like marriage, the therapist, if you pay your X dollars, they're, they're there for you in a way that maybe only a parent could otherwise be expected to be. Yeah, I would agree with that, sure. Okay, so you can... Okay, so you think uh anyway well okay what my, my point is that at the end of every call i tell the person to go to therapy because i can't fucking help you and you need help mm -hmm. dr k doesn't do that okay i'm also not a therapist okay so I, I want to acknowledge that I do have an advice show and I do exploit people for money. Mm -hmm. um, they're not on camera. And the conversations are very focused to one issue. So the person says, uh, how come I blah, 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 every time I blah, blah, blah. Well, I don't want to give any examples because I'm going to accidentally blurt out a real one. But... And then I say what I think, and then I say go to therapy, and then that's it. Okay. So I just want to disclose that. That said, um, okay, you're saying that you're okay with Dr. K sort of digging around in people's minds, semi to help them, semi for content, and all the wonderful gray area in between. Yeah because you think the net effect even though you think it is at times irresponsible and, and maybe even harmful the net effect is positive the net effect is positive i don't know how much of it is actually harmful to an individual i'd have to think about that but Uh, okay, and so when I asked how you feel about me criticizing him, you said you get what I'm saying, but you think that overall he has a net positive effect on the world. Mm -hmm. Because people go to therapy, which you think is also a stupid waste of time. But you no, uh, I didn't. Well, hold on, wait, wait. I never said that. I said okay. it's a waste of time to tell everybody to go to therapy. But I think there Isn't can that be what huge advantages here. Isn't that what he's doing? You're saying that in, he's not telling people to go to therapy. He's showing them what they could get by going, or you think he's yeah, giving people the tools, the tools directly that they might get from therapy and they can just have it from him instead or some Possibly combination. Both. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So maybe some people take something of value from that therapy, or maybe other people think like, wow, a conversation like this could be really good for me. So they go get therapy. Okay. Is there, 
uh, uh, are you going to tell me wh how you feel about me then criticizing him or no? Um, I, you're, not I mean, you're not exactly answering. Yeah. You're free to criticize him however you want. I, I know. Fundamentally this is America. On, yeah. But we, I think we fundamentally disagree on what's good and bad. So, I mean, like we're going to disagree on what things are good or bad. Right. Do you think it would be bad for me to criticize him? You can criticize him if you want. I, I think it would be I bad know. from my point of view because I think he does. I think he contributes more good, way more good than potential harm. Yeah. What if he needs to be challenged and then he can do even more good? Um, how could he be challenged? Like enter into an actual patient therapist relationship and then get consent to stream the therapy sessions, or? No, I think just the his. Uh, I th I th I th I think he should continue to talk about the ideas he talks about. I just think the way he's doing it is unethical. It doesn't really work unless you have a person to talk to, though. No. I don't think what he's doing is therapy. I think it's therapy. It's. Well, it's a weird sandwich of lies. He's saying it's not therapy. For liability for liability, yeah, for for liability, liability purposes, yeah. yes. But it absolutely is therapy, right? But I, but then it is therapy. Mm -hmm. But then I think because of the way he's doing it, it's not therapy. It can't be. Well, there are parts of therapy that should be there that aren't there. So there's no liability. There's no ch checking up afterwards. There's, there's no, no fucking um, audience when you're in therapy. Sure, yeah, that's a big difference too. Yeah, for sure. Every time he does a session, he's also thinking like, well, you know, there's 5,000 people watching. So are you going to fucking cry or what? No, I don't. I don't think it's that. Now you're being the cynical one. <laughs> Why? I, I don't think he's that oriented in that direction. You know, you know you, you, when he, he had like a, a technical problem when he was talking to Molina and he said he was like, fuck, right. We're getting we're, right when we're at the climax. I mean, an emotional climax can be a big moment in therapy. It doesn't mean that... I've never seen a therapist say that in person. He's, um, he's making... Well, probably because they're a... not having technical issues in person, right? They're no, just and, the, and in person. They've never heard a therapist refer to the climax of a session. That's like a... That's film te terminology. Okay. It's like well, he's, he's making a movie. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to go at him pretty hard, I think. So I just want to know... See if you can get a conversation with him, yeah. I can't. I tried. Well. All right. You have anything else to say about uh, any of that? Dr. K? Um, yeah. No. Good luck. Do what you want. Good luck, buddy. Have fun. Good luck. Be have safe. Fun. Be safe. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, okay, next topic. Uh, fans. How do you feel about having fans? How do you feel about fans? Cool. Well, it's my ideas. It makes me feel important. It makes me a lot of money. <laughs> it's probably a good thing, right? There's good parts of it. There's some bad parts mm -hmm. of it too, though. Sure. Like what? Like expectations public has on you, potential hate or anti fans or what? Um, I've, I'm finding a few main things. Okay. One, they don't actually care about you. They care about what you could do for them, which is yeah. you, you, uh, pathologically equate the two but i don't think they're the same some percentage of them probably genuinely care about you and then probably a larger percentage care about what they can get from you sure yes okay so you do you on some level you do know there is a difference between those two you may yeah, operate of course as, there is. yeah well yeah but you, you operate as though they're the same and you talk as though they're the same but that's that's you being self-protective they're not no, actually the same. You know that you know that some people you know that there is a way people can care about you beyond what they can get from you you know that. Uh, it just depends on how we define that. What can people get from you? 
Because those can be like this. emotional things they can get from you. They, it Don't. can be experiences they get from you. So that's just... You know there's a difference. You know there can okay. be a difference. And you know what I'm talking about. Okay. Well, you want to go with this? There was a post on Reddit today that said you should stop doing that. Stop doing so what? Saying, oh, okay. saying okay? Yeah, when you disagree with someone. Well, I'm acknowledging you should, what you're saying you should, and I'm asking. They, they, your, your fans want you to say two succinct sentences to explain why you disagree with what I've just said. Okay, the reason why I disagree is because I think that people are getting something out of you, but when I say that, people view it in a very materialistic or silly sense, like, oh, like you're giving them money, or oh, like you're having sex with them. But I think there's a lot of things that we can get from other people that make it worthwhile. So for instance, we can get the warmth or enjoyment of being next to somebody we love. We can get like a pleasurable conversation or an experience that is fun, like playing games. There are other things you can get that are a little bit more immaterial than like okay. the very shallow material. No, no, hold on. You told me to explain this, and I'm gonna explain it, okay? There are well, things two succinct sentences but go ahead I, this is all one big run-on sentence so far okay? Okay. i haven't gotten sentence number two yet okay, <laughs> okay. And this is all yeah. just a hyphenated part in the in the middle okay so i'm gonna finish my first sentence, okay there are things we can get from people that are relatively immaterial when all of the material and immaterial things disappear i think it's very hard for people to want to stick around now when i say that again people are like oh well you can't get money well no but like let's say you have a friend and they're no longer nice to you they don't treat you well you don't have fun conversations you don't play any games you're doing eventually they're gonna you're gonna like go somewhere stop being friends with them because there's no point in it. you don't get anything from them so that's what i mean when i say that like relationships are somewhat transactional that you're getting something but i don't mean it in like a very materialistic or shallow or vain sense i mean that there are other things you get from people as well okay <laughs> well, are you gonna explain why you disagree or are you just gonna say okay to me okay no, no, no. That was a different okay. That was a okay, I'm getting ready. You, you're, you okay. 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 I don't know. I am going to, I am going to explain. There, okay. Part of what I get from you mm -hmm. is knowing that you're uh, alive and that you're, that you're safe and, and doing Okay. And so when you say, so I would divide, I would call that caring about you. And then you being nice to me, you agreeing to let me interview you on stream, you, you know, whatever else you, you do or have done for me. Those are things, uh, you being interesting to talk to, those are all things I would say I get from you. But there's like a core, um, of caring about your well-being, of of caring about your you existing. That right. is, I would say, you could draw a line there and call that I, caring caring about you. Okay, so I'm going to ask for a level of intellectual honesty, um, knowing that you're incentivized to say something contrary. But I, I mean, I'll ask anyway. Let's say that you started messaging me, and I was like. I just have like, okay, or fuck off, or like, I don't care anymore, okay? Like, I'm doing my shit, like, do your thing, um, go make more pretentious YouTube videos, like, go stream, I don't care, have fun. If I started to say that to you every time you messaged me, would you have some internal care for me indefinitely? Or would that not fade over time as you realize, okay, well, this is really shitty, like, all of these experiences are sucking, I'm not getting anything out of this anymore? Um, the caring about the parts that I get from you? The things no, I me. Get from you, you said there was some intrinsic, universal, immaterial care that you had deep, for just me existing. Are you going to be like watching through the window to make sure I'm still existing in a happy manner, even if I don't even want you in my front yard anymore? Even if I'm like, if I'm never interacting with you, I don't have any positive experiences, no conversations. Like, is that still some part of you that's going to like forever be with me, monitoring my existence? There are people I have said I would care about forever who I don't anymore. Mm -hmm. so i know that's possible okay probably because you don't get anything from those people at all anymore there are no more positive experiences shared anything like i think i was a bit delusional about the nature of my uh relationships with them Okay. And they betrayed me. Okay. However, 
those were also um, those were also relationships I was very dependent on for like emotional stability. And while I, I, I think you lean on any friendship for emotional stability, huh? um, if you started doing that now, um, I wouldn't feel like you had yanked out like a support pillar from my like emotional support system. Uh huh. You know what? I don't. I don't actually. Thinking about the people I'm talking about, I uh, I'm really angry at them, but I don't know that it's true that I don't care about them. Okay. Um. I, my the way that I would interact with that is I would say that you care about some entity that doesn't exist anymore. There was some past person or set of experiences that you enjoyed, and you cared about that but either the person changed or your perception of them changed such that whatever exists now is not something that you want to engage with anymore or have positive experience with. That's how I would view it. Uh, my perception of you in includes the idea that you would suddenly become very cold and disinterested in talking to me. I don't think so. That's what they say. I don't think that's how you internally view it though. Even if you say it, even if you tell yourself that, I think that if tomorrow, if I would... No, 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 start... I would be shocked and hurt. I'm just saying I yeah. don't think it's impossible. I would be very hurt. Sure, but your perception of me, the way that you would feel about me, would change following the function of what I, I And I'd yet I think you. I would still care about you. I think you would care about an idea of me that isn't necessarily mapped onto reality anymore. I think you underestimate how much what you've done for me means to me. I hope it means quite a bit. But like, say tomorrow, I could, I could, I could do worse. I think it, say tomorrow, I showed up and I murdered your girlfriend and I cut off your arm. And my arm? I was gonna say fine to the first part. Yeah, and your arm, right? Then, I mean, like, then, I could... uh, I, I, uh, then mm -hmm. that would be a pretty serious crossing of my boundaries. Uh -huh. There are like um, ideas of there's like I can think of old girlfriends in high school okay, that I like still you... that I still that I still care about. But like, not really. I like. I remember who they were when I was fifteen. But I don't know if they're like that anymore. Like, do I truly have that care? Like, I'm not sure. That's not really right. There's an idea of them that I care about, but I don't know how much that maps onto reality anymore. Okay, but the example you gave me is you being cold and distant and losing interest mm -hmm. in talking to me or pushing me away somehow. The, mm -hmm. My sense is that you you do push people away. I I've heard that and I have felt it a little. Not a lot. What do you mean you felt it? Like I'm doing it to you? Sometimes. Just a little. I offered to hop on and have the combo with you after the Lawrence other thing. I agreed to do this. I think, yeah, I think off, I'm, yeah, you're, I'm you're pretty... also you're also often warm and and don't Yeah, push I think me I'm pretty away. communicative, no? Yeah. But there's a there is a there is another part of you that is like I don't keep think people so. at a, you don't think, think you keep people at a distance i think people keep themselves at a distance I, 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 because they I, see, like... I think they create this illusion in their mind that destiny's not trusting so i'm going to be careful about this because he's pushing me away and, and but so, okay I'm but you, you know like everybody thinks this about you yeah of course well you're saying it's a misunderstanding yeah it is although not all the time <laughs> sometimes i want people to get away from me but i think it's usually pretty obvious to read the signal or the signs I'm not saying it's totally voluntary. I'm I'm not saying you're intentionally trying to do it. I just feel like sometimes you're like I don't know. Okay. <laughs> what your verbiage is confusing, but I understand what you're saying, right? Cuz when you say push somebody away, there's an intentionality there that is kind of implied, but you're just okay, saying okay, that by okay. virtue of who I am, like I tend to push people away. I can probably agree with that, sure. Uh, you never want to be in the position of 
I, I guess I guess I guess you're not very vulnerable. I'm not very vulnerable. Yeah, and so I think that leads to you. You're usually not in the position of um, being uh, reaching out with the risk of being rejected. Kind of. I'm not very vulnerable, but it's it's not because I'm hiding it. It's just because I don't have very many vulnerabilities. Like I'm a pretty confident person. I feel pretty strong about most of my things. There's not like a lot to dig around and it's like this is something I'm secretly like really worried about I think if I matched your level of uh, reaching out to the other person mm -hmm. we would we would settle at a more distant place Probably, I think if we're gonna I think if yeah. we're gonna be if we're gonna be like friends I feel like it's gonna be more up to me to be like that's hey, probably Steven. true because I'll respond to every message, but it's pretty rare that I'll shoot one off on my own. Uh, uh huh. Yeah. 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 So I guess that's what I mean. It's not. It's not. It's not that you're actively pushing people away, but I feel like you're. Uh, you know, and like mm -hmm. professionally, you're in a position where like you don't have to do that. But then that creates a weird dynamic because then every time I reach out to you, you uh, feel like you're asking for something. That's fair. I understand. Right. Yeah, that's not good. Uh, that's probably something I should work on personally because it gives people that impression. Yes, and that combined with the, uh, you know, professional situation, it's it's very, that makes it harder. Sorry. And that combined with you thinking that uh, people only care about what they can get from you, you can see why I, uh, you know, why I'm thinking about this. Girl. Could I ask you to reflect on that for like two minutes? Yeah. Okay, because I really just want to go downstairs and get a candy bar. I'm really hungry. Can I do that really quick? <laughs> Be right back, okay? Hold on. Okay. This isn't me running away from the conversation, I promise. One sec. Okay. Let's check the chat. <clears throat> Let's reflect. Candy bar sounds pretty good. Candy bar tactics. Hey, Stardust. He's avoiding his emotions. That's what candy bars are for. Dr. K really does one-on-one -on -one interviews anymore. He did one this morning, motherfucker. He's very much capable of making content that isn't a therapy session format. Great. I Yeah, I... I okay, great. So then... Uh, he should stop. <clears throat> Boshed. Uh, uh, wow, I don't want to respond to any of the stuff you guys are saying. <laughs> I'll laugh at it, though. Uh, uh, you're sorry for telling me to talk to someone in the DMs. Uh, that's uh, I'm not talking about any specific person, and I'm not even telling people not to do it. I'm saying that I have become a fountain of money and attention and warmth and sparkles. And people want to bring buckets to me and fill their buckets up. And I've never had that experience before of, like, I've had the experience of people liking me and people, f and even feeling used in the way people like me, where they're like, I feel like you could make me feel special or you could make me feel good or like, I don't know. It's like, uh, like, uh, it's like when someone's attracted to you, like they like you and they're attracted to you. But they also want to like get themselves off using you. Um, but this is even more removed because it's it's not you want to use the audience that is like attached to me. You know? And so it's like you're using me, but you're not even using me. You want to use the fans or the attention. 
uh, and it's like a second level of removal. I guess I'll talk about this more with him, obviously. Uh, change your name to Mr. Sully. You're not reflecting if you're looking at chat. That's true. I don't think he really wanted me to reflect, though. I think he was just fucking with me. Uh, Dr. K definitely recommends therapy to people after his shows. Yes, but he also owns a coaching business. So, Healthy Gamer Coaches trained by Dr. K. So he can recommend therapy, but also you can sign up with one of his coaches. You know what I'm saying? There's a conflict of interest there. I have a lot of issues with it. When am I getting partnered? I don't know. Maybe never. Just for reference, Dr. K does do the thing where he tells people to go to therapy. Okay, yeah, I'm not, hey. Uh, I'm going to look at this very carefully before I make any definitive statements. But um, when, what I meant was I don't see him saying, I can't help you. You need to go to therapy. I see him saying, I can help you, and I will show you how, and I will try to help you as much as I can in this time. And... This basically is therapy. He's trying to have it both ways. It's not therapy, but it is. Go to therapy, but I own a coaching business. Stop bringing up Dr. K chat, you baiters. Yeah. Are the allegations about you true? I don't know. Are there any allegations about I don't think I have any accusers yet. Uh... Play Halo with me. I should I should be fucking playing League of Legends when he gets back. You should go hide and when he comes back, jump up and scare him. <laughs> I don't think that's the right tone, Stardust. I don't think that's a good idea. Where'd you get your big water jug? The real questions. Amazon.com. <clears throat> Do you have any planned content with Shaylin? What I've seen has been really, really good. Uh, yes. I had an idea. We were on a hike and I, and I and there was a picnic table looking desolate and lonely and I was like I know what we have to do. She agreed and I just got these new LED lights. They're battery powered so I can actually light it okay. I'm assuming you got rid of the scarlet red box of awfulness. Uh no, I oh oh I got a cloud rift got a cloud lifter for the uh, SM7B. It's not it, this is actually my old mic. Um, I I used this uh, this is this is my I kill pedophiles mic, but m for most of the album I used the other one. Uh, love my shirt, thank you, a Shaylin original. Me crawling out of a cabinet naked from my video. Um, I'm a YouTuber. Uh, Stardust is sus. Yeah, it's more like star sus. Please keep rejecting has infrared. Has or has? I don't know how to pronounce that. I'll ask Destiny. Is he a bad person? I feel like he's pretending. My sense is that he actually freaks out and then pretends it was a joke, and it kind of is and kind of isn't. I've, I've done that before, too, where you're, like, really mad, but it's also kind of funny. <clears throat> Even if Destiny became cold to you, would you still say that he would represent a valued ideal you want to see in the world? Yeah. I mean, I'm thinking about, like, my ex-wife. Um, I care about her, and I want the best for her. Um, despite feeling extremely betrayed so I yeah I feel like it's it's complicated we gotta f I think we're gonna have to talk a little bit more about it
feel like you reflected adequately enough? Yeah, I'm ready now. Thank you for okay. uh, allowing me to have that space to do that. No problem. You know, Dr. K and his shows a lot, he likes to take a minute to be quiet and meditate. So I just wanted and to eat, emulate the experience and, and for a, you. Yeah, and eat a candy bar. What kind of candy bar did you get? Kit Kat bar, you know, the best. Nice. Um, okay, so uh, so you're going to reach out to me more. I appreciate that. Did I say that? Well, you said you're going to work on it, and I have no doubt you'll be successful. Okay, I'll try. Yeah. I just had a lot of drama with an ex on stream because he thinks I didn't reach out enough, so that was. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, do you want to talk about any? Everybody's uh, in the chat is telling me to ask you about all the people who you uh, who you know they're telling me to ask you about. I wasn't really planning on doing that because I feel like, um, I don't know. I don't, I don't actually don't know why. Whatever you want to talk about. I'm here for you to pry. Okay. My brain is open to you. Yeah. I don't, I, uh, I don't want to mind fuck you. I am unmind fuckable. Don't worry. I know, but you see how that concerns me. Because, Why? because everyone's mind fuckable. And then, so you're telling me just do whatever, but I, I don't. That makes me, uh, me feel more worried. Why? If you give me enough drugs, you can mind fuck me. But I'm, I can have challenging conversations. Don't worry. Well, I think we're already having a challenging conversation. You think so? Yeah, I don't. I don't mean challenging like you have, like you can't like stomach it. I just mean like I don't know. I feel like we're okay. You're not happy with your lighting. Um, I keep having to turn the exposure of the camera up because the sun is setting. I was relying on a lot of the natural light. I have a smaller yeah. lamp over there, but it's not adequate. So yeah, but don't worry about it. Keep going. Um. I, I care about my ex-wife. Weird. I'm just kidding. I have an ex-wife. I care about her a lot as well. I figured. So I can't imagine. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's stuff you could do. It's a spectrum, Stephen. There's stuff you could do to make me hate you. Probably. But within the reasonable normal asshole things that you are more likely to actually do uh i uh my feeling of caring about you does feel pretty unshakable as it as the part that's disconnected from whatever pleasantries i get from you and i think part of that is because i'm uh i'm less of a sociopath than you think i am and part is that um, I think I value uh, what you've done for me already um, more than you think. Okay. I, I'm not here to argue with you over how you view a relationship. So, I mean, if that's how you want to view it, that's fine. Um, also, I think I value you as just like a person. Um, separate from both of those. Okay, like, that's good, I guess. All right, I, gl thank you for sharing. Yeah, I don't want to like enumerate the reasons why because I feel like it cheapens it. But um... yeah, I, I'll. <clears throat> I don't really want to say anything because I don't want to fight about this because I think we just disagree. But... but the challenge that I would put is that. If we say there is a form and a function, if we say there's a person and there are things that person does, I think that at some point we start to roll some of the actions into the person themselves. Mm -hmm. So we say like, well, I like you as a person regardless of your actions. Well, you, you really are what you do. Some... Exactly. 
So that's why I'm saying if I change my actions sufficiently, you no longer care about me as a person because you never cared about me solely as a human being person. You cared about me because my default set of actions is something that is like highly- Sure, yes. So yeah, if, you, if, you all, yeah. kill, if you kill me or cut mm -hmm. my arms off, you will have added a new data point to my graph of you that changes the rest of it so much that I'll feel like I didn't know you. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Or I'll be sufficiently changed such that I won't be the same thing that you originally liked. And now okay, I'm, but yeah. bridge burning or having some falling out with me mm -hmm. is already on my graph of you. That's what I'm trying to tell you. So that okay. would it wouldn't it wouldn't fundamentally shake me caring about you, even if um, you do some like petty shit. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, how do you pronounce infrared's name? Haas or has? Haas. Haas. Um. He blocked me from his chat and then asked me to go on his stream, a day later. Yeah. I said no. Damn. I could have invited him here for this interview. I think he. I think he's in LA right now. Oh man. Yeah, I think so too. I feel like that might change the dynamic a little. Probably a little bit, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so when I'm talking about fans, most of them don't care about you and as in the way that I'm defining it. Mm -hmm. And yet they are enti they feel entitled to you as if they did. Sometimes, yeah. Like the like that Reddit post. They're always giving you feedback. Mm -hmm. Uh and it, and it, and it's it's presented as you want feedback, you're you know, you're a smart guy, you want to get you want to be even better at what you do, and so we're just trying to help. Mm -hmm. But it's also controlling. So like I get a lot of messages and emails that are like, hey, I love what you're doing. But I just but, think that if you could maybe, you know, change this little part of it, it would be even better. Mm -hmm. And it pisses me off. Tell people that. Just say, I don't want emails giving me content critique. I do what I do. Fuck you. And then people will stop emailing you about it, I would. I guess, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, maybe. I think I've been pretty explicit that I don't want critique uh, uh, from the general public of how I communicate with people. I actually do want that from you. Um, but not not the average person and uh, not the average content creator. Okay. I think I'm giving you feedback when I think it's appropriate, right? Like after the last Lauren Southern conversation? I think you should give me feedback whenever you feel like it. Um, well, sure. I mean, if things, but I don't watch, I don't have time to watch a bunch of streams all the time. So yeah. Well, I think you should make time. No, I th I want to have a relationship with you where you give me feedback. I don't want that with people I don't know. Yeah, sure, I understand. That's like, pretty it's, not, it's not, it's not true. It's not entirely true. I don't know what it is. It's not that I don't want feedback. It's, um, the feedback has to come from a place of area, some, some place that you respect, where you think you're going to get something where the person has something worth saying. Yeah, I don't want feedback from somebody who doesn't have a profile picture on Twitter and has zero followers and yeah. who I have no reason to, who is just telling me their personal, it's like, that's a comment. That, that, mm -hmm. I think that, 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 that is fine in the comment section or the mm -hmm. chat. That's where that stuff should go. But it feels yeah. like there's a certain entitlement of like, let's like... People ask me like to get in a Discord call so they can tell me wh wh how like what I'm doing wrong. Mm -hmm. I assume this happens to you every five seconds. Yeah, I just delete them or I tell them to fuck off. But how do you feel about it? 
even if I don't agree with the feedback that people give me, I think it's good to be aware of the feedback because it shows that people are perceiving me in a certain way. And I want to be aware of how people are perceiving me because it's pretty important to right. what I'm trying to do. Yeah. Okay. But how do you feel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I don't tell people to fuck off. But why? But how do you, does it bother you? No, I, okay, I intellectualize the, the, most of the external, um, like I, nothing emotion. It's very hard to emotionally get to me from outside of a very, very, very narrow set of people. Um, yeah. The, the, uh, you can make me angry. I'll get mad when people say dumb shit, but... Your paranoid view that everyone is sociopathic is reinforced okay. by the way you have set your life up, and you have now made it true. Okay. I disagree with, all... like, three parts of that, but okay. That now there are hundreds of thousands of people, if not more, mm -hmm. who behave toward you in the exact way that you think other people are do you get what i'm saying like you're like oh, people don't care about you they only care what they can get from you which is what that is what a fan is but now because you're like okay with that or you even expect it it has allowed you to emotionally weather creating that nightmare and now it's true you've made it come true so now 99% of the people you interact with on a day-to-day -day basis actually only care about what they can get from you. That's not normal. But you're but now it's everywhere and now it's happening to me. I can see I'm like I <clears throat> these things happen to me and I'm like wow, I can see why Steven is the way he is. I can see I can see what happened to him. But I but I know I know that I think it's not, it's a chicken or the egg thing. I know that you also came to think this before this all happened. Yeah, this was because I felt this way for the vast majority of my life, way before. I know, I but it's allowed you to. Stuff. It's allowed you to stomach. So I, the way that I see it is, I have ways of viewing the world, and I have ways of viewing people. And insofar as the ways I view people allow me to make accurate predictions about the behavior, I'll continue to believe those things. I, if I were to run up against a whole bunch of people that defied my expectations, I'd probably change the way that I view those people in general. But I know, that but hasn't you, but you. But you see what I'm saying? You're reinforcing your expertise. No, I don't agree with that. I understand why... I, um, oh, shoot. Hold on for a second. Okay. No. Okay. I think that it might be that the conversation is going to break here or because you're convinced of something that is not true, but I don't know if okay. I can move you off of it. And I understand why. So hold on, wait, wait. I engage as openly and as warmly with people as I ever could, even if I fully trusted them. Um, I understand why you think I'm a guarded person. And you're essentially saying that I'm engaging in a limited type of interaction with people that's only going to reinforce the negative thoughts I have about how people act because I'm acting towards people in a way where they could only ever act in a way that satisfies the negative views that I have of people in general. Okay. When I'm can, I, can, I, can, I, can I reflect this back? Go for it. You are a guarded person and not trusting, but you have a simulation of how you would act if you were trusting running in your brain and you make decisions based on that no i associate with people in ways that i think are entertaining and i don't care i don't think about this thing i understand that you want to talk about this thing and you want to talk I about do. how i think about this thing. i don't think about this thing i know like you want you're i know trying to i'm not saying that you i think don't about internally it. yeah so like I'm, I'm when i saw happening. your content i never made the calculation of what are the chances that he's going to backstab me what are the like i just not even i don't even factor it into my head it's more okay. just i see an interesting person and i want to associate with this person and talk to this person um that's okay. it that's literally I'm, ta the but only I'm talking thing. about yeah. an i'm talking about an unconscious belief if, if what, what you're talking about is truly belief. unconscious if what you're talking about is truly unconscious then we can't talk about it because i don't know about it because it's unconscious right well then then i just want to, i want you to see what i think I then, know what you think because that's what every single person says about me. I really understand this that I have some guarded way of associating with people where I'm keeping I've never heard, I've, I've never so I've never heard anybody or... say what I just said. Okay, I feel like I hear it quite a bit, but You no one has I don't I've never heard anyone say you are uniquely suited. Well, except you almost said it when you're talking to Dr. K. That 
Uh, well, you, okay, you said this part. You said you're uniquely suited to deal with the life of a streamer. Yes. Part I believe part of why you're uniquely suited to that is that fans behave in the sociopathic way that you expect everyone to behave anyway. Everybody so, in my life has behaved that way prior to me ever becoming a streamer. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Most I understand of these heuristics that. are shaped from prior to streaming. I and, know yeah. that. I know. And my behavior now isn't shaped by interactions with fans. It's other people. It's other streamers. It's other people in my personal life. It's other people in my professional life. Like I know, but I'm saying fans. that it, 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 I'm saying that it's weighing on me heavily to have fans interacting with me in this way where they want to talk to me but I can tell they don't actually give a shit about me okay I don't think it bothers you as much because I think you're used to it you're used to feeling that that's what people are going to do I I'm saying like I from what you're saying people have been doing it to you your whole life so what's another million on top sure so then what's the goal I guess or what are you trying to get out of this part of the conversation I guess I just want to see what you think of that idea of that way of looking at it that you in um you were treated a certain way it gave you this worldview but you are now reinforcing it by surrounding yourself with fans do you do you, do you see do you no, I'm, not, I'm not I do you see why I am saying that let me restate this back at you. So you're saying that I have a, a negative view of people trying to use me, kind of. Um, but when I'm associated with a lot of fans, of course, that's going to be the case. So I'm just reinforcing my negative view of people by doing that. Yeah, that. And then the flip side of the coin is that it makes you very good at, at dealing with the pressure of it because you've you've always done it. Okay, wh what do you... Do you think there's a way that I'm acting incorrectly or would you change something or should I be trying to change something or... Well, the thing I would change, if I could change anything about you, would make your job much harder for you and much more painful, which I think you acknowledge somewhat. You said, like, if I get more in touch with my emotions, I it might make me less suited to my career. I've thought about and that I, a lot. I don't think that is the case. I think I'm pretty in touch with my emotions. I just don't think there's much there that, yeah, I, that's, yeah, that sounds kind of weird to say, but I think I'm... I've spent a lot of time over the past year thinking about that. And I think I've figured most of it out. I don't think there's just some deep hidden part of me that wants to be more emotionally vulnerable to people. I just don't think that's the kind of person I am. There's a non-hidden part of me that wants you to be more emotionally vulnerable. Uh, possibly at the cost of you being able to do what you're doing in the way that you're doing it. I understand what you're saying. In Great. your mind, the challenging part of this conversation is me trying to do something that might inhibit my ability to do my career but what i'm telling you is the challenging part is before that it's that i don't know if those like deeper emotionally vulnerable things even exist in me i don't think i'm that kind of person that's what i'm trying to say a human person I, or whatever i think that just different people can process emotions in different ways and i just think i'm not a very emotional person i think you are okay We can't. There's no, we can't really. <laughs> I don't know how we resolve disagreements over who, of who I think I am, but uh, I don't know if we have to. Okay. Well. Could you retire and live off of my money, or? Yeah. I think I could. I think so. You stream a lot. I do. I like it. It's really fun for me. Uh, I want you to... I want us to assume that the following questions are not an attempt to circumvent or rationalize my earlier position or to get you to agree with me. I'm not trying to change your opinion of yourself. I just have some questions that are yeah, sure. semi-related but are, uh, are not... I'm, I'm not trying to argue with you. Yeah, okay. Okay. You stream a lot because you like it. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, do you think you're a workaholic? It's 
I think so, yeah. I, I spend a lot of time working, and when I'm not working, I get a little bit worried sometimes, so probably, yeah. What do you get worried about? I guess it's kind of true in the streaming world, but I always get the impression that like if I'm not moving forward, I'm kind of falling behind. Yeah. Um, and you're missing out on a lot of potentially big events if yeah. you're not like constantly in tune or whatever. I mean, I could probably go without. I mean, like sometimes I'm taking vacations and I've chilled on streaming for a bit. So I mean, I can do it, but I just I really enjoy working and prefer to do it. My friend was trying to get me to take a day off, and I said. Uh, I said it's weird because it's like you should strike while the iron's hot. But then when you strike, it just gets hotter. And I was like, basically, I feel like I'm just going to be working more and more until I screw up. So monumentally that I just have to take a break. Yeah, you can also fall into this weird trap where it's like, I need to work right now because I'm getting a ton of viewers. And why the fuck would I throw away this opportunity? But then right. when they start to slide, you're like, okay, well, I'm losing viewers or I'm low on viewers. I need to work right now so that I can get my viewers back. So you can get like yeah. in this never ending treadmill of, yeah. That's what, the, that's, and that's how these companies want you to think. They want you to be addicted to the, the gamification of it so that no matter what happens, you think it means that you should work more. I don't think Twitch is that purposeful for how they do things, but I mean, it benefits them, I guess, in a roundabout way, yeah. I mean, they got those bars and graphs that are so nice to look at. All those exclamation points. Bro. Um, okay. Uh, okay, so what's bad about being, what's bad about you being a workaholic? Is there anything? my personal relationships can suffer if I'm not thinking about them enough. So like Melina will get irritated if I'm spending too much time working and streaming and then not like allotting some time to my personal relationships. Do you play any other games other than League? Usually like resource management games. Sometimes um I'll play like single player games, it just depends on what's going on. Like what? Like which single player games do I play or? Yeah. Mm. I guess growing up I played a lot of like JRPGs. These days it'll be whatever <clears throat> I guess a really popular game that I should play, I guess. So like I played through The Witcher 3. I probably should have played God of War, but I didn't. I need to play The Last of Us 2. I played The Last of Us 1. Um, I'm a big know, fan whatever, of The Last like... of Us 2. Okay. Yeah, whatever the... Um, I guess whatever's like popping at that point in time, yeah. I played through Cyberpunk. Oh, God. Yeah. Uh, sometimes I think about asking you to play video games. What kind of like multiplayer games do you play? Uh, I play The Last of Us. Is that multiplayer? Yes. It's the best multiplayer of any video game ever. Uh, okay, I don't believe you, but... It is. Ob it, objectively, it is the best multiplayer of any video game ever. And so few people play it. That when I play with Jimmy, my friend and uh, editor, my no man, um, we join separately so that we can be on separate teams. Like we'll get put in the same match. And so few people play it that it takes like two minutes to get. It's like, it's like there's only ever like 30 people playing it at any given time, but they're, but they're always playing it. And like you'll play against the same. I, there's people I've been playing with against. Uh, playing against for year, like like for six years, just the same names, all all maxed out on everything. Wait, The Last of Us Two? The Last of Us One. Oh, that game had a multiplayer. Oh, okay. Apparently, a lot of people in chat are saying it was actually really good. So it it is still at it's current currently. What is it? Is it are like some of you zombies and some of you are people or? No, it's four v four. Um, it's like chess. 
you, you have to think very strategically. Like if you walk into a room and t- there's two people in the room, like you're going to die 100%. There's nothing you can do. There's no, there's no quick uh, scope in your way out of anything. Um, and it's incredibly brutal and gory. Like it's, I think it's the most violent multiplayer uh, of any probably mainstream game that I've ever seen. Okay, interesting. Oh, I play Smash. <clears throat> I don't play that game at all. Uh, I started playing Halo. I need to play that game. Maybe we should play some Halo. But I want to play it off stream. So I was going to say, I think of asking oh, you to play man. video. Oh, man. Off stream. I think I, oh, I, man. So, this is the workaholic. A true workaholic would not want to play video games off stream. This is like free money just on the floor. Why would you do that? Because life isn't all about money. You're just like you're killing like three birds with one stone by doing that though, no? No. That's 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 how workaholics think. You just think, well, I could just flip the camera on and be working at the same time. But it's exactly. not really the same. But if we but if we just play Halo like for fun. I mean I can still uh, play for fun on stream, no? No, not really. No. I don't think so. Streaming is fun, but it's not uh it's it's like it's like camming, like uh, you know you, uh, yeah, I like jerking off. And sometimes I like filming it, but it's not the same thing, you know. I understand what you're saying. <clears throat> if you're trying to get me to play games off stream, that's a that's a it's monumentally a big, tall it's order. A, <laughs> it's a big step, I know. So I, I I haven't asked you, but I'm asking you now. I think we should play video games together off stream sometime. That is almost never gonna happen. <laughs> I don't. I know. Even don't. I know because okay. you would need you would need to because this the thing is you have a button that you can push that just uh, prints money, mm-hmm. and so at little uh, well I, see you think it's at little cost to you but I think it. I don't know. You said being a workaholic makes your personal relationships suffer. This it's happening right now. You're demanding our relationship is suffering right our now. Rela- our relationship is suffering right now. You're rejecting my friendly request, my invitation. You're rejecting my invitation because you want thousands of people to pay us to play video games. If you want to play video games off stream with me, your best chance is. When I do my next rest server, sometimes I'll play that off stream because if I stream it, people will fuck with me. <laughs> that's your best. That's your best shot. All right, I'm in. We can do it on your terms, Stephen. Well, fine. are you good at like Rust? Have you ever played before? Are you good at shooters? I'm good at video games. Okay, you have to qualify that because I am. I was a professional video game player. Okay, so I am good at video games. What do you mean when you say you're good at video games? Uh, I'm pretty good at video games. I don't know. Although I'll say I haven't played with a keyboard and mouse since high school. But I feel like I could pick it back up. Okay, maybe you could. I'm not that good at shooters, so. Uh, so I, you you want I have to do I have to try out? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, we'd have to try out. We'd be playing some Halo or something. See how good you are. You know. Okay, I'll I'm happy to try out. Okay. 1v1 me, bro. Yeah, we'll do it. Okay. My friends who I play video games with would be very upset if I insisted on streaming it. Well, I mean, they're not public people. I could understand that, yeah. You are not acknowledging that allowing the masses to participate and pay you drastically changes the nature of 
what you're doing. It doesn't for me, but <clears throat> I understand why you think it might. Okay. I accept the uh, dead end. Okay. I think that's why I normally end up streaming games, even if it's just single player, because it's not like... I don't think it's a huge difference between playing single player games off stream versus on stream, so I might as well just... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm afraid of becoming like you. I can see that happening. I mean, even even what I just said, I was I was on a hike with Shaylin, and I was like, oh, we should shoot a video here. And then suddenly, we're not hiking, I'm scouting, I'm location scouting. Does Shaylin complain a lot about that? Yeah. Is it recent or has she done that always? Or did it just start with the stream stuff picking up? She has generally complained always about the idea that if she said, um, hey, let's go spend a weekend in X place. Take the weekend off and let's just go be together somewhere. And it's a, you know, a two hour drive. I would be like, whoa, all right, what, what? No, that's too much. I can't do it. But if there was a, uh, if I could film myself 20 feet underwater talking about pedophiles in like a cave in Thailand, I would go do it in a second. I think I just made like an Elon Musk pedo accusation yeah. of free association mm -hmm. in my head. But you get what I'm saying. That's like a really, really, really bad habit that you have to break. Um, I do this all the time with Melina and it's really bad. So I just left for four or five days to go and do stuff out here. But the second I get back, I'm going to want to stream because I've taken like four or five days off of streaming. Um, right. And it's a little, yeah. But when I get back, she's going to want to hang out and do stuff. But the issue is that I've just been not streaming for four or five days. And now when I get home, you want me to take another day off work to do stuff with you. From my perspective but from mm -hmm. her perspective it's like you've been working what the already. fuck well no it's not that it's worse than that from her perspective it's why the fuck could you take four or five days off to go and hang out with people and do random shit but then when you come back to me now you have to go back to work and you can't give me any time what the fuck <clears throat> so that's a huge problem i have in my life but yeah what's the answer what do you tell her well we argue about it a lot it's probably the biggest problem in my relationship right now <laughs> Usually they say women are expensive because you have to buy them stuff. But you have a money printing machine in your office that you have to turn off anytime you want to hang out with Molina. The type of women that want you to buy them stuff, that's, that's, that's a garbage woman. Who the fuck cares? I, I, that's not the type well, of relationship even, that I this is even Well, this is more expensive in a way. It's time that people Every want second to you spend with her is a second you could have been making money. You told me to schedule my time. I did. Well, so you don't work too much because I said work can fill every hour of the day, right? Yeah. So why don't you schedule your time? Because I just let work. <laughs> I can give you a lot of really good advice. That doesn't mean I follow it. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. <clears throat> I can tell you so many things about how to manage relationships and all that shit. And I do sometimes. Let's be a lot of the advice I give is really good, but I don't follow all of it. I have very real problems in my life that I have a hard time dealing with. So. I think you should schedule your time. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Um, we we have uh, scheduled blocks of every day that we spend together. How do you like that? I like it. I don't stream as much as you, though. Yeah, but you could be working on video stuff or other stuff as well, yes. right? Yes, and I usually am. But it's easier to stop and start. What do you do during it, your scheduled time? And are you entertained while you're doing it? With her? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, fight. But like, you you schedule time to just fight every day? Well, no, we schedule time to spend together, and often we end up fighting, or uh, we watch 
stuff. We eat, talk, we go on walks. We're like a uh, like a sixty year old couple. Okay. Do you schedule time with Melina? How does it happen? I how, try how to, you... but... But you blow it off. No, I don't blow it off. If we have you something scheduled, we'll do it. dick. But the issue is that she's usually the one finding things to do. Yeah. And if she doesn't, I'll just fill all of my time with work-related stuff. Kind of like you and me. Yeah. I see a pattern. Like, if you or Melina never messaged me again, I might stay in my room and stream for 12 years. And then I'll come out and I'll be like, wait a second, where did you go? Yeah. I see. You should work on that. Yeah, I think so. I think you should schedule some time with her, no? The problem isn't the time. The problem is me being engaged during the time. Because there's so much stuff that I love doing on stream that I'm ultra engaged with. That, yeah. And we have like a really different set of interests. It's hard sometimes to schedule things. It was so much easier when we were like within walking distance of a movie theater because I really like watching movies and we could walk to the theater all the time. But with yeah. COVID and stuff not releasing, it's been way shittier. That was a really yeah. big way that I could spend time with her. But yeah. Um, oh my god, I don't want to. I don't want to rip this conversation off into this direction too much. Just a quick okay. question: Did yeah. you watch the new Matrix movie? Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna be honest. Okay. I was really, really, really high the first night, okay? So maybe okay. that influenced it. Uh, but I started watching it, and I, I... When I got through the first third of the movie, I was ready to hop on Twitter because everybody shat on this movie, and I wanted to give the most contradictory take ever because I was like, yes. the first third of that movie, it was actually yes. probably one of the best things I've ever seen in my life. It was so awesomely, like, self-referential and comment. I thought it was so good. And then it totally fucking nosedived in yes. the shit. <laughs> I had the exact same experience. I was like... I was like, I think this is one of the best Matrix movies. Yes. Oh, my God. Every lot. Like, I couldn't tell. And again, it might have because I was really high. But it almost felt like the director was talking to me and challenging my expectation of the film constantly yes. about what it was supposed to be. But then it turned into generic action garbage. And I don't know what happened. Right. Oh, if they, fuck. It if, was so frustrating. <clears throat> yes. If it had gone from that to unforgettable, visionary like amazing visuals and cool moments to if it had been like oh you think we're just going to make another matrix movie blah 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 and then 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 hit like a home run of like the coolest matrix shit you've ever seen it mm -hmm. would it would probably be the second best matrix movie it would it would have it would have been amazing mm -hmm. um but then it then it seemed like oh you're just doing the self-referential shit because you don't have it anymore this is Maybe, all yeah. subterfuge this is all smoke and mirrors because you lost the magic Mm -hmm. I I heard that it's the most expensive of the Matrix movies, which was because I was like I was like I can forgive some of this looking shitty if it's cheap, but yeah. I don't think it was cheap. No, because CGI is really expensive. You got to pay a lot of artists to work on that shit. Uh, yeah. But so the did... stuff that mattered all looked really bad. Like, how do you have yes. worst fight scenes twenty years later? Like, and no offense, but like this is this is not neo anymore this is fucking john wick so you right. should be able to do yeah like i i, I truly don't know yeah yeah because you can't say it's because keanu reeves is too old he can fucking still yeah. move like and kick ass and shit i mean and liam neeson like you can make a cool action movie with a 60 year old dude and they just didn't especially with all those yeah well, look at it liam uh, neeson or whatever right yeah yeah but, I, I went to sleep because I couldn't finish watching it all, but I went to sleep like I was so excited the next day. I was like, I, we got to finish it. As soon as we wake up, we got to finish that movie because I, I think everybody is wrong about it. I think it actually is like a gem. I think it's such... And then halfway through, I was like, oh no, it's nose diving into like a worse than generic action movie. Yes. And then it turned into utter garbage. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Yeah. Ugh. But, okay, sorry. Yeah, fuck. Anyway, I, I, just, I just I just don't know how you can have a Matrix movie with no memorable visuals. That's that was a really bad idea. Yeah, or at the very least, like say what you want about the Matrix two and three. I think people rag on those movies more than they should. They at least had like cool like fight scenes and shit. I guess if you like that. 
But this one yeah. sucked. Everything about it, all the fight scenes were horrible. Neo's little force field thing constantly yes, was garbage. Really like, yeah. Remember when the one girl was like, oh, fuck, don't get me started on this, goddammit, okay? In the Matrix, the first Matrix, okay? When they have to jack in to save someone, yeah. it's Neo going to save Morpheus, okay? Yeah. And it's a huge ordeal. And it's like yeah. the coolest thing ever if you're like nine. Even if you're 25 or whatever, I still think it was like, that's awesome, okay? Nobody's ever yeah. done it. That's why it's going to work, right? Yeah. In the Matrix 4, there was one part where the girl's like, jack me in, I need to save all those guys in the van. And I'm like, okay, I wonder what she's going to do. And then when she gets jacked in, they just like have guns and they just shoot all the people off the van. I'm like, oh, you saved us. I was like, what am I even watching? Yeah, God, it was the, garbage. The first <laughs> oh one is God. like a horror movie. It's like when you're in the Matrix, the agents are like sharks and they're coming after you and like you're going to fucking die if you don't mm -hmm. immediately do everything you're supposed to do. And it was it was scary. Yeah. And all of that is completely gone. Yes. there. I saw a YouTube video once, an essay on the protect, the it's the antagonist throw or the protagonist throw. And it was interesting because they juxtaposed it with Terminator 2. So basically there's something that I'm going to point this out. If you like watching action movies, you should mute the stream because this will ruin every action movie for you, okay? okay? So if you're fighting somebody in real life, okay, if you can kill that person, when you get your hands on them, the last thing you're going to do is just throw them somewhere. Right, you're just going to kill them. Yes, Yeah, exactly. you're going to kill them, right? Now, in Terminator 2, the scary thing about the robot guy was when he got near people, they died. They yes, there's no, no fucking around. Exactly. Yeah. Same thing with the agents. If an agent is near you, you're fucked. They're going to capture right. you or kill you. You're just fucked. Right. Um, and they do this thing more in movies now where they, they just throw kind of like, you. they throw you they around, throw you around or they shoot at you and you miss. And yeah, what you were talking about, like that drama with the agents. And honestly, I don't know if you could have done it any better than the first Matrix. Um, the drama with the agents was just so bad. And no, everybody seemed kind of invulnerable and everything was like so lame and like, oh, yeah. fuck. When it, when it becomes clear that the villain is going to just throw the hero around until the hero kills the villain. Mm -hmm. it, or there shoot is no every more. shot and miss over and over yeah. again. And There's no like, tension. Yeah. 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 Okay, so you don't go to movies anymore. Well, because they, there haven't been very many coming out. They're starting to again, though. I want to see Scream 5. But... Yeah. Um. Okay, so what do you mean when you say you're not engaged when you're hanging out with Molina? We, you're, uh, um, it's just you... hard not to let my mind wander to things I could do that are like so much more like critically you, challenging you, or yeah you need to be doing like three things at the same time at all times yeah now there are some things that i can do with melina that are a lot of fun so like we've gone like diving before um like water related stuff is super fun there are a few things that are really fun but i can't like i can't go on a walk or hike i can't do that what happens i my, i have to do something it just what happens I, if you don't i just get really bored i'm just walking it's just really bored difficult. yeah how do you experience that? I feel like I want to be doing something else. I feel like I'm wasting my time. Do you get like mad or like anxious? I don't get mad. I, maybe anxious, I guess, if I'm like tapping my foot or something. I don't know. But it just feels like I should be doing at, like at least two other things. Like I could be doing my phone thinking or I could do my phone doing something like emails or Discord messages. I could be listening to a podcast. Like there's like, I don't mind going to the gym. That's like an active thing. Like I'll spend my two hours or hour and a half at the gym and that's like fun. Yeah. Me, but okay do you have do you would you would you say it's fair to say that you have trouble sitting with yourself um i can do it if i need to like if i have something to think about i can do it so i really like long drives and i like to it like or if there's something that i really need to introspect on if there's been some challenging shit i can spend some time with myself just thinking about things but as if a I don't general have anything like day to day if, if i don't have anything purposeful to dwell on then i hate just sitting there doing nothing it just feels like a waste of my time Okay, so whatever you're saying to Molina, you also say to yourself, like, hey, if you want to have a meeting and we have something to do or something to discuss, we can then we can hang out. But if not, I got shit to do. Kind of, yeah, but that sounds really mean. And then it makes her feel like she's not important to me, which is shitty of me to make her feel that way. And it's not yeah, really but, true because she is really you, important to me. Yeah. But you do the same thing to yourself. What do you mean? Um... You, you would not just like sit and take time to be with yourself. 
Like if you, you were know. your own, if you were your own friend, we would have to be playing like, games or doing something, engaging with each other, yeah, arguing or something. Right. Do you think any of this is a problem? Um, probably, <clears throat> but it's pretty fundamental. So. It's a big. It's such a big problem that we might as well not call it a problem. Well, the problem is that I'm going to lose all of my relationships if I can't allocate some amount of like purposeful time to other people. <laughs> so I don't know if that's a good thing or not. That seems like a pretty big problem. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, if I could change anything about you. And maybe I can. <laughs> uh, m I would change being more in touch with your feelings. So that you might be able to sit with them and or yourself and or Melina and or me um, more like I guess intimately it's not like a sit with your feelings thing like if we want to do some intimate experience like that I mean I can do that especially with drugs or if we're going to drink which is a drug well, yeah my sense is my sense is that you want to be distracted no, and I know. I know that's not. I know how you that see people it. say that. No. I yeah, mean, no. I think you want to be distracted from your feelings, but you think mm -hmm. you're just bored. I understand your desire to say that. Yeah, thank you. I, I, don't, do I, don't you I don't believe yeah, in boredom. I don't believe in boredom. Um, I'm comfortable sitting with my feelings. Like I can sit with myself and be chill. But the problem is, I just feel like other things I'd rather do. I understand that, and you understand why I said what I said. Yeah, because you're looking for some deep, sad part of me that is just like dying to come out. Some child that's yearning for attention and warmth. Yeah. Yeah, that's not that's not the case. <laughs> I've associated with a lot of people that think that I'm different than how I say that I am, but I've spent a lot of time with myself and thinking about myself, and I don't think there's like something that I've missed that some. Well, I, yeah, I hope you don't think. I I have a lot of the same problems. I hope you don't think that I'm saying that I don't have a deep sad child that wants me to hang out with him and I keep saying yeah I will as soon as I do this other thing leave me the fuck alone I I, I uh, I'm not trying to say like you know there's something wrong with you that isn't wrong with me if I could change anything about myself I would also change the same thing what would you change <clears throat> my tolerance for and interest in sitting with my feelings i feel like i can sit with my feelings if i need to it's just boring. well you okay but you, but i'm defining you okay i'm defining being bored checking my phone every five seconds blah blah all this shit not the, like the, the i you, when when shaylin says hey there's a fair there's like a farmer's market on saturday and and i and i start having a heart attack mm-hmm I don't think that's because I'm bored. I, and I don't think it's because I don't want to hang out with Shaylin. It's because I don't want to hang out with me. And, oh, okay. I, and when that's, I start thinking like, God, what the, fuck, what the fuck am I going to do? Might have, yeah, you might have those feelings, but you are projecting hard onto me. I do not feel that way. If I somebody understand. were to tell me there's a thing going on on Saturday, I'm not thinking like, oh my God, I don't want to hang out with me. I do like to hang out with Melina. But what I'm thinking is like, I could be grinding league. I could be I doing know. like political stuff on stream. I, could I know. Be, like, there's like I know a million you... more ways that are. I yeah. hear you. I hear you. I don't believe. I think you're lying. No, I don't think you're lying. I just think you're wrong. You do. You think I'm no, lying no. to myself? No, I... yes. 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 You well, do. no, 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 no. no uh, you I do. Think you... you do. You think I'm lying to myself that I, I actually think you're... have an intense discomfort with my own feelings of being. With I think myself. you're wrong. I think you're wrong about yourself. I don't think which you're is, lying. Which is another form of lying to yourself, right? Yes, but I, I want to make it clear that I don't think that you. You want to soften the blow so I'm less hostile towards your criticisms. No, no, no. This is going to make you more hostile. I think you'd rather oh, okay. be called a liar than be called uninformed. Maybe. Probably. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Lying maybe a little maybe bit not. more purposeful. Lying a little bit more Machiavellian. I like that more than being dumb. Right. Yeah, I just think you're dumb. No, I just, I just think I don't... I... Uh... I don't... Th if what I'm saying is true, I just don't think you're aware of it. I don't I don't think you're dumb or lying. I just don't think you're aware of it. You're unaware. Okay. It's you're confused. That's what it is. Okay.
Well, you asked what I would change. So that's my answer. Okay. I just want what's best for you. Think so? Or do you want me to be the best version of myself I can be for you? Because all of this was framed initially through me reaching out to you spontaneously to play games offline. <laughs> you say that like it's the most disgusting thing you've ever said. Uh, no, I want what's best for you. Okay. And yeah, yeah you think I'm projecting or selfish? I think that what you're saying makes sense, and I would probably say it to most people that gave the answers that I give, so I don't blame you for doing it. You think I'm confused? About the you. internal workings of my mind? I, I would yeah. say so. But, I mean, you don't know me very much, so I don't blame you. Oh. That's what you think. Listen, I've done a lot of drugs, okay? I've done a lot of exploring of my... I know. Of the inner workings of my mind, all right? I I've know, seen yeah. what's in there, all right? <clears throat> Can I ask about the your plans for the future of your career? I kind of just do day by day. I really enjoy what I do. If I do this until I'm 60 or 70, I'd probably be happy the whole time. Um, I might have more political aspirations in the future for like doing different stuff to help campaigns, but the last time I did it, it exploded hardcore, so I don't know. Maybe we'll see. I think about running for office sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Be something local. It would be entertaining. Yeah, something local. Some council. Some board. You ever think about that? A little bit, very briefly. And then I realized the pay sucks, the job sucks, and I'd rather do streaming stuff. Pretty hard to beat. Yeah, I'd say so. Sixty or seventy? Would you be retiring or you would be I mean I figure at some point your body is not gonna work with a computer well. Either it's gonna be hard to see or you get arthritis or something, maybe I don't know. I don't think you'll have to sit to stream at that point. I think you'll be able to do it from I think you'll be able to have a little drone that it does whatever the fuck you want it or it does whatever it thinks you want it to do, following you yeah. around at that point if you want. I don't I don't or think I'll that's have, gonna be a problem. Maybe I'll have Elon Musk's neural link, you know, who knows? All right, I don't think I have any more questions. Okay. Is there any, any topic that you feel like we um, didn't get to or should go back to? Um, I don't know. Do you think so? What does chat think? Uh, why are you constantly being so being awkward? Being so awkward. Yeah, I see yeah. that guy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, love you, buddy. Be safe. Uh, dad's to me. Uh, ask him about Anna. Yeah, my it's my not Anna. It's Anna. Don't say oh, Anna. An I don't know why people fucking call her that. Yeah. Oh, I feel I feel like Anna is two ends, and it's not true. That's that. No, uh, that. The fake name anyway, but. Okay. Um. Yeah, my chat's always trying to trick me into talking to her. And then, and then inevitably I get like five DMs that say, um, Destiny's going to be really pissed off at you. If you do that, don't do that. And then I, and I, I, I've actually never really looked into it and I'm just like, okay, well, well Hey, I don't know what's going on and I, I don't want to know. Okay. 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 Uh, Uh, 
Here's the real question. When is the wreckful conversation coming? What is the wreckful conversation? I don't know. Okay. Um, wreckful is the topic that we talked about the least okay does that mean you'd like to explore it more or i'm very care I, i'm 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 worried about exploring it more why or in what way what worries you it's a sore subject for you, well, you? why for you for you why would it be a sore subject for me because it's upsetting well it's not like i pushed him <laughs> what do you mean it's not what i meant I'm, there are so many things that have happened in my life. There, I'm totally fine talking about whatever you want to talk about. There, that worry, you don't that believe worries me when me I more. say that. No, yeah, I, know, I don't believe you, you when think... you say you're totally fine. Because you always say you're totally fine. If ever once yeah. you said, I'm not totally fine, then I would fucking believe all the other times. But you never said it and you're never going to. Maybe. I don't know how to. Yeah, I guess. That's a big problem I have. When you When you see that I intersect with women that end up getting weird delusions about me it's because of this it's because people think that no you must be lying about this or oh you are this way and i'm not i'm, I'm totally honest with who i am why the fuck would i lie why okay let's explore this why would i lie to you about whether or not i'm adversely affected by something that happened in my past i don't think you're lying okay you think i'm engaged in a level of self-deception then i just think you're a bit disconnected from your feelings Okay. I mean, I'm on. I like. I'm sad he's dead. Like, I wish I, he was still somebody I could talk to. It's not like I'm. I'm not like. Oh, it's cool that he's that he's gone. Like, that makes me feel better about it or something. Like, I'm not. I, 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 I know what the part. The, the point of contention is: is it a sensitive subject? No, I don't think so at all. I know. That's what. That's why I'm afraid to talk about it with you. Why would that make you afraid to talk about it? Because I feel like it has to be. And if you're gonna say it's not, then I feel like you are just letting us slash away at your insides and that's I don't why would I, do why that. would I endure that why would I subject myself because you can't that? feel it but then what is the okay if well, that's how you feel you um you're the meme <laughs> I'm an empath yes <laughs> I can tell what you're feeling simply by deciding that you're feeling that way yeah okay no i'm scared and that's what you're feeling out of an abundance of caution why if, well, I'm the, I, I'm the we're only gonna talk about it i want to talk about the, it very carefully i'm the only person that you're going to be able to talk to on this platform that can navigate these types of topics without getting severely like emotionally distraught over it but what i'm concerned about that, yeah is not that that's because you're so good at maneuvering that you don't get cuts I'm concerned that you just don't feel it. So you may be drenched in blood by the end of the conversation, but you just won't care or know. How can you, and, how would you and, make that, how that, would you ascertain that? I don't know. I don't know that I can, but the problem is I don't know that you can either. That's what concerns me. I don't think you know what you're feeling. And I also don't really know what you're feeling. I'm just guessing. So now, so then it's like, uh, I feel like we're flying blind. Okay. All right. anything else you'd wish to explore then hopefully something that doesn't secretly leave me wounded and scarred in a way that neither of us can actually perceive what do you have a mission statement for your channel fuck no but I generally have one. I just like conversations to be as fact-based as possible. So when I engage in um, politics, I want people to be factually correct what they're talking about. And then the second point is, I wish that people could understand each other's positions a little bit better. So have a little bit more empathy for how other people think instead of just ascribing like the worst possible intention to whatever they think. And you want to create that? Yeah, people that do that, yeah. You want to make people more empathetic towards each other? 
I guess, or at least understanding of, of each other, yeah. Maybe not empathetic, but at least have an understanding. And, and then an intellectual understanding, at least. You don't have to be empathetic, but that'd probably be the you best you, don't want... you could. Well, yeah, I think so. <clears throat> mm -hmm. That's, yeah, that's the same as mine. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. 